Week 5 in the National Football League as we welcome you to Jacksonville. It's the 3-1 and one Bears and the 1-3 and three Jaguars. Good afternoon, everybody. Kenny Albert along with Moose and Goose, Daryl Johnston, and Tony Saragusa. The Jacksonville Jaguars are a team in transition. New owner, new head coach, young quarterback. Today, they look for their first win here at home. But the one constant amidst all that change is Maurice Jones-Drew, but he can't do it alone. He needs some help. This offensive line for the Jaguars has to elevate their level of play, help out that young quarterback, Blaine Gabbert. The key message this week for Mike Malarkey, we have got to make plays when they're there to be made. They've had the opportunities, but they haven't finished up until this point. And Darrell, the Chicago Bears have certainly made plays, especially on the defensive side five interceptions in a big win in Dallas on Monday night when you look at this game on paper there's a couple of matchups I'm sure the Bears feel very confident in their defensive front against this offensive line of the Jaguars their passing game against the Jaguars secondary that struggled against the Bengals last week but the big question I have is how do they respond on this short week that was a big emotional win on a big stage Monday night it's a short week of preparation then they're on the road to Jacksonville does that have any impact on this game or do the Chicago Bears come out here today and take care of business. Road game Monday night, on the road again here today. Opening kickoff is coming up. When we return, we'll head down to the field and hear from Tony Saragusa. Back in Jacksonville, 88 degrees. It is hot. It is sticky. As we check out early scores, Eagles in come from behind fashion, leading the Steelers late. Atlanta looking to raise their record to 5 0. And the Giants have put up 41 on the Browns. Down to the field at Tony Sergusigus. Thanks, Kenny. You know, Daryl talked about a short week for the Chicago Bears. A little bit of adversity, something we have to deal with as NFL players. When I look at the Chicago Bears defense, they're good. They're very good. But in order to be great, they need to do three things today for me. They need to go and don't let the heat beat them. It's hot, it's humid. I mean, look at me. I'm soaking wet. I'm not even on the field. Two, they need to dominate an offensive line that's really struggling. Got some young guys up there. They need to dominate, plain and simple. And three, they need to stop Maurice Jones-Drew. This guy could be a huge, huge factor in today's game if they let him start going. If they get those three things done today, they'll be the defense that I think they are. All right, keep cool down there, Goose. Look at Lovey Smith, his Chicago Bears. Off to a 3-1 start. Tied for the lead of the NFC North with the Minnesota Vikings. First-year head coach Mike Malarkey spent the last four seasons as the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Yeah, they've seen some spurts. They've seen some flashes during the course of the first four games this season, but it's not consistent and when they've had opportunities to make pivotal plays there's a handful of plays every game and if you make those plays you give yourself a great chance to win the game and Jacksonville has not been able to finish those opportunities Jaguars have won the toss have elected to receive Robbie Gold will get things started Rashad Jennings is back deep for the Jaguars who have lost their first two home games by a combined score of 50 for the Texans and the Bengals, and we are underway in Jacksonville. Jaguars will start from their own 20-yard line, led out onto the field by the second-year quarterback out of Missouri. He's only 22 years of age, Blaine Gabbert. And he's taken a lot of criticism nationally, and, and I think it's unfair right now. I, I don't know if even... Blaine expected to see the results of last year happen when he comes into camp and he's going to be a backup and there's so much change and all of a sudden five days later he finds out he's the starter and Kenny at the top you mentioned all that change in this organization last season I, I just think with his age you know how young he is as he matures and there's some consist consistency within this organization I think we'll start to see the real Blaine Gabbard. On first down it's Maurice Jones Drew and now you talked about him in the open and he is swarmed by the Bears defense with Lance Briggs leading the way. Well, this is the key right here for the game today. This five-guy group right here has to control the front of the Chicago Bears. And, and if they don't, it's going to be a long afternoon because not only can they shut down the run, but they can get, off the, get after the quarterback. And this young group of skilled players, except for Maurice Jones-Drew, but the other guys, they've got to they step up and make a play when it's there to be made. Jaguars without starting. One out for Ron Robinson. 
due to a concussion his third this season it is Maurice Jones Drew once again out to the 24 yard line gain of four setting up third down at six and I was I was blown away by a quote from Brian Erlacher this week and that was this is the best defense that I've played on throughout my career with the Chicago Bears. And I think that that's a bold statement. But when I talked to him about it, he said, listen, these guys right here, the four guys up front, not just them, but the depth that we have in that group to be able to roll bodies through, keep them fresh. And then the secondary, you know, you, you talk about a group that's played well, you know, off and on. Tim Jennings has been huge this year, and Major Wright and Chris Connie have really solidified the safety spot. Jennings, the NFC Defensive Player of the Month for September. Gabbard to the air for the first time on third down and six, and there is Tim Jennings to make the stop on Mike Thomas. So Jennings continuing his terrific play here in October. But, but this is the difficulty when you play against the Bears. You've got a free blitzer to your quarterback, so you're going to throw the ball high. You think he's going to be open, but they've got coverage behind that. They make it so difficult. A look at the rookie third-round draft pick, Brian Anger, off to a terrific start over his first four NFL games, but a big challenge today with Devin Hester, one of the best return men in the history of the league, back deep for Chicago. Take it up to 25 by Hester. Not much. Return of only four. Well, that was an excellent job by the punt coverage team of keeping leverage and not letting Devin Hester get to the outside, get on that sideline. Yeah, you don't want to get him started because uh, hard time looking at the back of his jersey that guy has unbelievable speed the cuts that he makes is unbelievable well, Hester setting up good field position for Jay Cutler and the Bears offense Bears coming off the 34 18 win in Dallas on Monday night First and ten for Chicago from the 29-yard line. The handoff to Matt Forte cuts to the outside. And Forte is forced out of bounds at the 35 by Dwight Lowry after a gain of five. And that's a good sign for Chicago Bear fans to see that running game on the opening play have some positive yards. This group has always taken a little bit of time to gel together over the last couple of years. The offensive line, and as a result, the running game has struggled. And once that running game starts moving, now all of a sudden you open things up. Brandon Marshall, a huge addition in the offseason. Leads the Bears with 23 receptions, reunited with Cutler. They were together in Denver. Tight end Adam Shifter. Back it down at five. It's Forte again. Forte out to the 38 yard line. Stop a yard shy of the marker. And it's going to be a one, one play at a time approach for this Jacksonville Jaguar defense. They have improved from week to week. And, and when you talk to the Chicago Bears, they've seen that on film. They've got to take that next step today. There's reasons why from week one through week four that they haven't felt good about how their performance was on the field. They've addressed those mistakes. They need to have a complete game this afternoon against this Bears offense. Yeah, one thing that that defense has to do, especially the defensive line, is communicate. They all have to be on the same page. When it's pass, rush the passer. When it's run, play the run and stay in your gap. Low snap on third and one, scooped up by Cutler, and then his pass is picked off by Derek Cox. It looks like it all started with that snap, Darrell. Jay Cutler looking down at the ground. The ball rolls back to him. Doesn't have enough time to look up and see the defensive back where he is. Just throws the ball. Ninth career interception for Cox. His first this season. Only at Southwest.com. Derek Cox plays this play very well. You know you got Brandon Marshall on the outside. He loves to run the slant and this down and distance. He's very physical at the line of scrimmage, challenges the relief, the release, puts himself in a great position to make the interception. And there's your first example of finishing, Kenny. An opportunity to make a play and finish it. Only the third interception for the Jaguars this season. They've had many other opportunities. And now they take over in Bears territory from the Chicago 45. Gabbard to the outside. And the pass could not be handled by the tight end, Zach Potter. 
You know, I think this is going to be a good matchup for Blaine Gabbert today because the one thing that you have to do when you play against the Bears defense is be patient. And I think I've seen that on film from Blaine Gabbert. Very rarely does he become impatient and make a bad throw down the field this year. It was some of the things that he saw last season in his rookie year, and he's really worked hard on that. Bring in the backfield, including the fullback, Greg Jones, the handoff to Maurice. Jones drew, and it's Major Wright. Strong safety coming up to make the tackle. Gain of just one. And there's one of the guys that's really solidified the back end of this defense. Chris Conti and Major Wright playing very, very well. There they are, 21 and 47. Either one of them can drop down, be that extra guy down in the box to help stop the run, but they're also very good in coverage as well. Major Wright with two interceptions of Tony Romo on Monday night. Third down and nine. Jaguars must get to the 35. Gabbard over the middle, and Jones Drew unable to make the catch. Maurice Jones Drew is right in the area, right in front of the linebackers, behind the defense lineman where he needs to be. He catches this ball. These are the little things that are going to multiply and turn into a big thing that they need in order to win this game today. They need to go and make these catches run for first downs, not put themselves in fourth and nine like they are right here and try to get that first down. Jaguars go three and out for the second time, Goose. Their catch is called for by Hester at the nine-yard line. So the Jags unable to capitalize on the Bears' turnover. Back in Jacksonville, some early game headliners. RG3 knocked out in the third quarter. Uh, the Redskins loss for the Falcons. Atlanta 5-0 for the first time in franchise history. And how about Ahmad Bradshaw, 200 yards on the ground for the Giants. That's impressive. The Giants were the worst rushing team in the NFL last season in a 200-yard game today for Ahmad Bradshaw. 32nd in rushing. They win the Super Bowl. Cutler over the middle. And that pass is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Kellen Davis. Kellen Davis has got to, he's got to kind of carry over from that game Monday night. You know, three catches over 60 yards. You know, what you expect from a big physical guy like that. You get around him on the football field, he is a monster. And he's got to use his size to his advantage. He, sh he should be much more productive in the passing game. On second and ten, it's Matt Forte. Gate of five out to the 14. Rasheed Mathis made the tackle. Mike Tyson, his first year as Bears offensive coordinator. He was assistant here in Jacksonville from 2006 through 2009. And he really feels that this afternoon there's an opportunity to get back to a lot of stuff that they worked on during training camp. Yeah, through the first four weeks, there have been different circumstances that have prevented that. But he's really open to get back to some of the fundamentals and some of the plays they worked on as they got ready for the 2012 season. Here's one of them right here giving Jay Cutler a little bit more liberty at the line of scrimmage. And the Bears keep it on the ground on third down and five. And Forte picks up a first down out to the 23. Finally brought down by DeWan Landry after a gain of nine. It's a really basic concept you come out as a quarterback you've opened up your formation now you just do a box count inside hey you know they've left themselves vulnerable to our running game so let's sneak Matt Forte into that line of scrimmage so Jay's coming out doing a little bit of a count there to see how they're going to number that box if he feels they have the advantage we're going to switch to the run now Cutler looking to throw on first down of the pass he is caught by the tight end Kellen Davis you talked about him a moment ago only his seventh catch of the season, and it's good for 15 yards. Jaguars defense only rushing four up front. Not bad with the pressure. They need a little bit more up in the face of Cutler in order to get him to be shaky a little bit and move his feet. But the outside guys, defensive ends, both do a nice job of going and closing the pocket. And Goose, the Jaguars have not gotten a lot of pressure up front. Only two sacks so far this season, none in their last three games. Bears empty the backfield from the 39 on first down. It is Brandon Marshall who hangs on. He was submarine by Russell Allen. First catch of the day for Marshall, gain of 11.
this is where Brandon Marshall is most dangerous. He's a big physical receiver. Look at how he comes off the ball. I mean, there's not a break in stride as he runs that inside slant. And when he catches the ball, that, that's when he becomes a dangerous runner. Looks like he might have taken a helmet right on the hand on that catch. Well, Marshall replaced by Dane Sonsenbacher. From midfield, it's Forte, and Matt Forte has another Bears first down to the Jacksonville 36-yard line. 14 yards for Matt Forte. There's a lot of mismatches in this game for Chicago, and you got to be careful on what you want to do. Don't get away from, from something that you're very good at, and that's Matt Forte running the football. I know you're going to look at the secondary and like your matchups in the passing game, but get Matt Forte involved in this game early. Get that offensive line coming off the ball. Don't have them backing up all game long. Let them put their hand in the ground and come off. Brandon Marshall has returned. Bears have picked up first downs on their last three plays. This is Michael Bush, the former Raider, his first carry today. And Bush is able to gain nine. And it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough job for all the teams that play Chicago this year, because that is a rough one-two punch in the running game when you talk about Matt Forte. And then here comes Michael Bush into the lineup. And what was an issue in week one, poor tackling for the Jacksonville Jaguars is showing itself again here against the Chicago Bears. That Bears offensive line is really doing a nice job of sticking on that defensive lineman and staying with him, giving Forte plenty of room and choices to go and run. Also, keep an eye on Garza there at the center. Does a great job of getting to the second level on the class block. On second and one, Deuce, it's Kellen Davis once again. Bounces off a tackle. And Davis has another Chicago Bears first down. Eight of nine for Davis, his second reception. And this is one of the things that Jay Cutler does very well. Throws on the run, and here's the play action that you can utilize once that running game gets going. You got the hard press, Mincy goes down a little bit, can't get back to get Jay Cutler, and now you got the big man in the secondary, and that's what I mean by using your size to your advantage. I mean, he is a mountain of a man running free in a secondary. Bears started this drive back at their own nine yard line. And the play is blown dead. Bears took too much time. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. We made the first down. And this is one of the things that'll get Jay Cutler upset more than anything, is the tempo. He wants to stay up tempo. It drove him crazy the first three weeks of the season with the replacement officials. They were really impacting the tempo of all the games. And then last week, he, he had high, rate, uh, high reviews for Mike Tice and the way he controlled that with the regular officials being back for that first week. You saw a much improved tempo. That has been a clean game today. That was our first penalty. Play clock again winding down. Bears able to get the snap away. Cutler off his back foot to the end zone. Looking for the tight end, Davis. One thing that Jay Cutler will do as a quarterback, he's going to give his guys an opportunity to make catches down the field when they get one-on-one. -on -one. That defensive line does a good job of rushing, but what I'm seeing from them, that linebacker crew is they're so deep okay that it's really easy for Cutler to sit back there and know when they're coming they ran a delayed blitz on the last play but see how deep they are right here they have to go and move up into the line of scrimmage and get in and, and clog those holes up on the run and get up in there on the pass also another nice run by Forte down to the 14 yard line seven more yards for Matt Forte he's got 45 yards on the ground on only six carries But remember, the Bears were forced back due to that delay of game penalty. So now Chicago facing third down and eight. 11th play of the drive upcoming. From the Jaguars, 14, empty backfield. Cutler on third down to the end zone. And Elshon Jeffrey did not come down inbounds. Alshon Jeffrey on the outside trying to get that back shoulder throw down the field. A little bit too close to the sideline. 
Alshon not able to get both feet in bounds. So here is Robbie Gold. Eight for eight this season, 32 yard attempt from the right hash. And Apollos places it down. And Robbie Gold gives Chicago a 3 0 lead. Jacksonville named for it. Andrew Jackson, 1822. As we welcome you back, Bears now to a 3 0 lead, 88 degree afternoon. The old Jaguars wearing their black jerseys today. Where's it 80 up? up? Up there in the booth, it's 88. It seems a little hotter down here, Darrell. And Kenny. No, it's not the heat, Goose, it's the humidity. Oh, man. It's 86 up here in the booth, Goose. Here's Jennings on the return out across. The 25-yard line. DJ Moore, the tackle. Back in a moment. Join the NFL and the American Cancer Society in the fight against breast cancer by supporting the A Crucial Catch campaign. Visit NFL.com slash auctions. Bid now on authentic NFL pink gear worn by players and coaches. Pink everywhere we look today. Cleats, wristbands, gloves, caps, towels. Yeah. You know, it's the old saying, Kenny, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so make sure you're getting your screenings done. Absolutely, and uh, Maurice Jones-Drew is bottled up in the backfield by Major Wright. Loss of three on the play. There he is again, and, and you can see why Lovey Smith is, is very excited about the play at his safety position. It, it, it's, it's a lot of fundamental things, too. It's just, you know, it's better angles. It's the little things that have helped Major Wright and Chris Conte form a pretty tough group back there on the back end of the Bears. Yeah, I like the way they tackle, wrap it up secure in the open field one thing about that Bears defense that I'm not seeing from the Jaguars defense everybody running to the ball now Gabbert going deep on second and 13 and it's off the hands of Cecil Shorts almost almost that this is one of those plays that you got to make you know you're a team trying to find its way through a season he's got Tim Jennings runs right by him it's gonna be a tough catch but I think if he adjusts a little bit more to the ball in flight, he gives himself a better opportunity. I don't want to give Blaine Gabbert a lot of time back there in the pocket because when he does have time, he makes good throws downfield. Jaguars must get to the 37. Third down and 13. And a terrific second effort. By the first round pick, Justin Blackman, as he extends for the first Jaguars first out of this game. They had a nice game last week, worked hard in practice. Look at the physicality right there, just kind of shrugs off Tim Jennings on that, spins back inside for the first down. I thought that Justin Blackman was one of the safest picks coming out last year in the draft. And over the course of the season, you can see it start, the light bulb is starting to come on. I think he's going to have a, a good run here over the next couple of weeks. Two-time Politnikoff award winner is the top receiver in college football. Fifth overall pick out of Oklahoma State. Here's Maurice Jones-Drew coming to the outside. He has another Jaguars first down. Hard to bring him down. Chris Conti finally makes the tackle. So the NFL's leading rusher of 2011. Maurice Jones-Drew into Bears territory. A 20-yard pickup. Looks like he might have got lost coming around that corner, Goose. Yeah, Brian Erlacher pursuing him down the line of scrimmage. Thought he was out of out of bounds right there. He sort of slows, rela relaxes, but then drives himself up the line of scrimmage. One guy you don't want to get going early there, Daryl. You know that. They start getting that run game going, they'll stay with it. There's no problem with that. Now Jennings in the backfield off the play fake. Gabbert rolling right. Now he throws, and that's broken up by Tim Jennings, Mike Thomas, the intended receiver. Tim Jennings, your defensive player of the month for the month of September, and not just the interceptions. You know, Lovey Smith talked about all the little things, and, and we've heard that a lot this season, Tony, as we've talked to coaches and 
there seems to be a big focus on attention to detail and the fundamentals this year. And he said it was one of the great things that Tim Jennings did in the offseason was get to the coaches, how can I become a better corner, and did all the things that he was asked to do in the offseason. Four picks. He's also broken up two others that were intercepted by teammates. On second and ten, Jaguars did not fool the Bears this time as D.J. Moore comes up to make the tackle on Rashad Jennings' loss of four. is Raheem Moore right and a loss of three now when you watch this Broncos defense forces it outside but there's DJ Moore coming and he doesn't he doesn't chase the play away his responsibility is backside contain back winding down to this first quarter Jaguars have not scored a first quarter touchdown so far this season Gabbert on third and 14, wide open, it is Blackman. So for the second time on this drive, the Jaguars convert on a third and long. I think one of the things that Blaine Gabbert is doing a nice job of today is staying in the pocket. They're rushing four. You're feeling a little bit of pressure, but you've got time to throw the ball. He hangs in there, allows Justin Blackman the time to get down the field, get open for that catch in the first down. Yeah, one thing he really likes is the way his offensive line is playing right now. They're doing a good job up there. The Bears had a little bit of a stunt right up in his face. They got it solidified. Gave him plenty of time to look downfield. 19-yard pass play. New set of downs for the Jaguars. From the Bears' 28-yard line. And this time... The miscommunication between Gabbert and the rookie out of Florida, a and Kevin Elliott. One of those instances where quarterback and wide receiver aren't on the same page. The throw looked high from Blaine Gabbert, but did Kevin Elliott break to the inside when Blaine expected him to stay outside on the fade? You're going to have some growing pains. This is a young team offensively at the skill position. Ninth play of the drive for Jacksonville. On second and ten, it's Jones True. And he's brought down from behind after a, a short game, gain of two. Charles Tillman made the tackle, so the Jaguars have already converted on a third and 13 and a third and 14 on this drive. Now looking at a third down and eight. And, and that's very unusual against this Bears defense. You know, that, that's the position they're trying to put everybody in. They usually win those battles. Ten seconds remaining in the quarter. Jaguars must get to the 18. And they do. It is the six foot six tight end, Mercedes Lewis, who picks up another Jaguars first down. So they've converted three times on third and long on this drive. First quarter comes to an end. Three nothing, Chicago. nothing as we begin the second quarter three big conversions on third down for the Jaguars on this drive first and ten from the Bears 12 yard line and the play is blown dead ball start offense number 73 five yard penalty that remains left guard Evan Britton you know, that's tough because that's a unique play. It'll be interesting to see if that play was put in specifically for Julius Peppers at the left defensive end. You give him a little bit of a flash, get him up the field. You're going to bring Mercedes Lewis across the field and kick him out. Sneak Maurice Jones drew up inside. So Evan Britton may have just made a mental mistake right there on a play you've worked on all week specifically for that front. First Jaguars penalty. Gabbard out of the shotgun on first down. Gabbard to the end zone, and it is broken up by Nick Loach, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. Might have been broken up by Mercedes yeah, Lewis. exactly. <laughs> he sees it's going to be thrown, overthrown a little bit. He went up there to try and defend that a little bit. Let's take a look at it. Try to keep Roach away from the pick. <laughs> That's a good choice by Blaine Gabbert. You know, if he gets one-on-ones, he told us on Friday he was going to take a shot if he liked the matchup. That's a good matchup right there with a big tight end against the linebacker in the red zone one-on-one. -on -one. Mercedes Lewis gets her away with a little bit of a face mask right there on Roach also. 
Gobbert on second and 15. Into the end zone and through the end zone. You know, Darrell, we got to give some props to this offensive line. They did a really nice job of stopping. They've got one-on-ones all across the front. You got Mercedes Lewis right here. Roach on him one more time. You know, on that one, Tony, they actually put both the running backs on Julius Peppers. Watch number 90. There's your fullback and your tailback blocking him. Yep, and that, that allows you to turn your line all the way across to the other side. Yeah, it looks like Brian Erlacher and Lance Briggs came late when they saw that they were blocking. They got to be up in there closer to the line of scrimmage to get some penetration. So the Jaguars perfect. Three for three on third down this drive. Gabbard's pass is caught, but well shy of the marker. It's Mike Thomas. Gate of four. So the Jaguars will send out the field goal unit. Very impressed with Blaine Gabbard on that drive, and I think because of what happened to him last year. The mental clock he has inside his head when he drops back in the pocket is moving a little bit quicker than most guys. And on that drive, he did a heck of a job of hanging in, in that pocket. When the pressure was all around him, he wasn't moving his feet. He had his eyes downfield looking for his receivers. So Josh Stolby out to attempt a 31-yard field goal from the right hash. Stolby ties the game at three and ties Mike Hollis's franchise record for all-time field goals. It is hot on the sidelines. On the field, Goose, even up here in the broadcast booth. Kenny, my thermometer down here in my booth is reading this right here, 100 degrees where I'm standing. It is roasting down here. Got to look at Val Scoby moments ago, his 175th career successful field goal, tying the franchise record. Triple digits down on the field, Goose. We'll be back. So there's Lovey Smith. He was not yet the Bears head coach the last time Chicago played in temperatures of at least 89 degrees. You have to go back 12 years and the Bears lost that game in Tampa 41-0 as Brandon Marshall breaks free for a Chicago first down gain of 11. You know both of these teams you know the heat on the field but on the sidelines to beat the heat, they have air conditioning seats. You know, I've seen heated seats, but these are air conditioning seats. You can see the wind up at the top, blows on your back and also down on your feet. That's where it's sucking all the heat in from your body and it blows out cold, ice cold air on you. Probably about a difference of 20 degrees. So if you want to get uh, chilled up, you go right on the sideline and sit down. Here's Forte on first down. Goose, what bothered you the most about playing in, in the heat? Uh, it was, you know, it was uh, everything. I think this, you know, you get soaking wet inside. Your pads are slipping. You know, everything sliding. You're sticking to yourself. I've never really liked that. You know, then going at halftime, you try to get an IV or something like that. You see the guys come out at second half a little bit better because you try to go and get that fluids back in your body. Will, will be a long line for IVs in those situations as the Bears. Move the chains once again. It's the rookie Jeffrey who gains 10. Yeah, and he, he's, gosh, he's going to be a good player here for the Bears. I mean, this, this wide receiver group for Chicago right now, Brandon Marshall, you look at uh, you look at Alshon Jeffrey and, and how he started his rookie year, Devin Hester and how explosive he is when he gets the football in his hand. Jay Cutler's got some weapons that he can work with down the field. From the 43 on first down, it's Forte. As we will head to Los Angeles for a game break, here's Patrick O'Neill. Patrick. Thank you, Kenny. What a comeback for the Colts at home against the Packers. Andrew Luck, they were down 21-3 to at the half. He hits Reggie Wayne for that touchdown. Last chance for Green Bay, not even close. Mason Crosby hooks the 51-yarder. An emotional victory for the rookie Andrew Luck and the Colts to beat the Packers. Let's go back to Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Patrick. Here is Forte for another Bears first down, and we all send our best wishes to Chuck Pagano, Colts head coach, who sent an email, as we heard on the pregame show from Jake Glazer, to all of his players, and Colts come out. Very emotional win over the Packers. Unbelievable in that environment to be able to maintain and control those emotions, especially going down 21 to 3 to the Green Bay Packers. So great job. Congratulations to the Indianapolis Colts organization.
Here's Michael Bush. First gains a couple down to the 43. CJ Mosley made the tackle. Looks like Mike Tice wants to go and stick with that run a little more than usual, Darrell. Well, I, you know, I, I think he feels there's an opportunity there. Yeah. And, you know, this, this Jaguar front has improved over the first four weeks of the season. But let, let's see. Let's see if you really think you fixed all those issues in your run game. Second down and eight. Butler looking to throw. Well, there is a flag in the secondary pass intended for Jeffrey. Rasheem Mathis on the coverage. Looks he's like gonna... it's against Chicago. Yeah. Pass interference. Offense number 17. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Down at the bottom of the screen, working against Rasheen Mathis. Now the ball's being thrown. They both have the opportunity to get to the ball, so shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact. I would have given that a no call as much as offensive pass interference. Well, one thing the rookie's got to remember is if you, if the officials see your arm extended and on the defensive back, they're going to call it every time. So that's something that you have to learn that they're going to call and not do. By the way, this officiating crew worked the Giants-Eagles game, the big offensive pass interference call on Ramsey's pardon right at the end of the game. Yeah, I wonder if that was more for the push-off at the top of the route than the competition at the point of the catch. Second down at 18, following the penalty, as Cutler takes off. And Cutler with a, a bit of a stiff arm to the former New York Giant, Aaron Ross, who chases him out of bounds at the 40. Jay Cutler is sneaky with the football when he decides to run. Yeah, I, I think people get lulled to sleep that he's the gunslinger and the big arm from the pocket, but he's pretty athletic on the move, and I think you've seen some of those plays incorporated into this offense with Mike Tice, where there's a little bit more movement of the pocket and Jay throwing on the run. Cutler game 13, setting up third down and five. Bears must get to the 35. Cutler off his back foot, throws, oh, what a catch. Matt Forte. But then he was unable to hold on. Looked like he had it initially, so now the Bears will send out the punting unit. This is one of the underrated parts of Matt Forte's game. He is a good receiver out of the backfield, and yeah, it, it looked like he might have been able to spin around and catch that, that low... Low throw on the back side, but went through his hands. Yeah, Russell Allen had a nice read on that. Went to the outside, but got blocked by his own manner. I thought he would have had a bit. Adam Publish, the former Jaguar, punting from midfield. Ross lets it go, and it will be down by Eric Weems at the three-yard line. Terrific placement by Podlesch. So the Jaguars pin deep in their own territory. Tied at three. Tied at three in Jacksonville. Jaguars pin deep in their own territory. They start from the three-yard line. Maurice Jones-Drew coming out of the end zone. Gain of just one. Well, get ready for the biggest sports month of the year as Foxtoberfest continues on Saturday with Fox College Football, Utah Battles, UCLA, 11th ranked USC takes on Washington. Then it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Cowboys and the Ravens followed by America's Game of the Week, Giants and 49ers plus other regional action. And then game one of the National League Championship Series, the biggest sports month of the year. Foxtoberfest continues next weekend. On second and nine, Gabbard to the outside, complete to Mike Thomas. Jump out of bounds by Tim Jennings after a gain of five. They've got everybody kind of crowded up around that line of scrimmage. The Jacksonville Jaguars running some tight formations, doing some things there. Yeah, they even tighten their splits up on the offensive yeah. line, making it hard for those defensive linemen to get penetration. They're bringing nine guys into the, into the line of scrimmage area. There they go. Open it up a little bit on this one here. Bears got to stop running all the games up front. Just run one-on-one. -on -one. 
Third down and four. Average pass incomplete. It sailed between a couple of receivers, Thomas and Blackman. And, and, and I think, again, we talked about, you know, some young guys in this offense and growing and maturing together. And I think right here, Mike Thomas goes inside, and Blaine Gabbert is expecting him to go outside. There's Mercedes Lewis in tight coverage by Conte, but watch number 80, Mike Thomas, breaks to the inside, and the ball goes out. I think that Blaine Gabbard wanted him to just kind of hook up and show him his numbers. Yeah, it's Blaine Gabbard had uh, Julius Peppers right in his face right there. Had to get rid of the ball, but that time made a good decision. But now Anger, who turned 24 yesterday, punting from his end zone. Good kick, forcing Esther all the way back to the 26-yard line. Esther cuts to the outside. A lot of east-west running. But he only gains two on the return. Good job by the coverage. You did just keep forcing with the sideline. A 63-yard punt. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Back in Jacksonville, tied at three. First three possessions for the Chicago Bears. Turnover, field goal, punt. They start from their own 30. Cutler hands it off to Forte. And he is swallowed up for loss. Terrence Knighton made the tackle. And we got to go back and pay off the coverage unit for the Jaguars on this punt. And now I want to watch the force is going to come from the right side of your screen. Right? He's your outside contain. He's supposed to go to the ball, but but allow that outside arm to be free. Devin Hester will always make you hold your breath. Uh-oh, he didn't, he lost contain. Uh-oh, we got we got another guy that lost contain. There's a block. <laughs> Uh, you get down, Julian Stanford saves the day. He's one of those returners that can go from one side of the field to the other and turn it into a huge play. Yeah, phenomenal job of staying in their lanes, huh? Now Cutler on second and 12, complete to Brandon Marshall. His third catch today, gain of seven. I, I'm impressed with Jay Cutler. He's a streaky guy. His first pass of the day today is an interception and not a real great decision by him. A good play by Derek Cox on Brandon Marshall, but he's bounced back. That was a nice drive they put together on that field goal. So he settled into a good rhythm. Bears throw 12 plays, 77 yards. Now third down and five. Bears must get to the 40. And Marshall had it knocked away by Derek Cox. Well, A.J. Green for the Cincinnati Bengals had a big week last week against the Jaguars. And when you've got Brandon Marshall coming to town and all Sean Jeffrey in this receiving group, there was some question of how they were going to play. Right now, Derek Cox has done a heck of a job in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's been physical at the line of scrimmage, really challenged Brandon Marshall on the release and has been in good position. And then at the point of the catch, does a nice job getting his eyes around and finding the ball. So here's out of Podlas, who spent four seasons in Jacksonville. End over end kick. And a fair catch is called for by Aaron Ross at the 22. Goose trying to stay cool. 3 3. Must be nice up there in that booth. Some jobs, but this guy right here has been holding that up for the last 25 minutes. He's got to be the tiredest guy next to <laughs> this guy on the field right now. That's a tough job right there. They've taken it to a new level. Oh, they, got the shade, they got the shade and the cool bench. They're already working on their third shirt. How oh, many Jaguar players can you fit under that green tent? All of them. First and ten from the 22-yard line of the toss. It's Maurice Jones drew. Gains a yard. Chris Conti made the tackle. You know, I'm watching Brian Erlacher, Darrell, and you talked earlier about how he said this is the best defense that he's ever had so far, the best players. I thought you were going to talk about, you know, how he was talking. These guys are so good that I'm having a hard time getting to a play. I'm tired of congratulating them. I want to start making plays myself. So he's really working hard out there to go and get, you know, a tackle or, or, or a, a little bit of a rush on the, on the pass rusher out there. He's, he's working hard to try and get something done, I'll tell you. He said he's given out a lot of high fives this season, Goose. On second and nine, it's Blackman. Time for another game break to Los Angeles. Here's Patrick. 
All right, Kenny, Broncos, Patriots. Yeah, Manning versus Brady. Brady, plenty of time to hit Wes Welker. Welker showing up five catches in that eight-yard touchdown, but Peyton Manning has Denver on the move. It's 7-0, start of the second. Kenny, Moose, and Goose. So for Brady, that's now 37 straight games. Darrell with a touchdown pass. He is all alone in third behind Breeze and United, who are tied. And Drew Brees looks to set the record tonight against his former team, the San Diego Chargers. On third and one. Looks like the Jaguars have it up. Well, one of the matchups that, that we were going to keep our eye on today, Tony, was that defensive front of the Bears versus the offensive line of the Jags. And we've got to give the Jags some credit right now. They're playing well. They're keeping them off balance with some good play calls. But Rod Marinelli's bunch, right now, they are not impacting the game the way I thought they would. Cincinnati's front really, really controlled the line of scrimmage last week against Jacksonville. I'll tell you what, the, the defensive line for the Chicago Bears, you see them out there right now, really surprised that they're not just rushing you know, one-on-one. On one. They're doing a lot. Too many games up front. It's taking too much time to get to the quarterback. Off the play fake. Gabbert to Blackman. Justin Blackman into Bears territory. There is a flag. Israel Adonage got mugged on that play, guys. So it looks like the 19-yard reception will be called back. Cameron Bradfield had Julius Peppers, number 78, on the last pass play and, and got beat, but the ball came out quick enough where there wasn't a sack. On that play, you've got a long play action. He's got to hold that block a little bit longer, and he was forced to hold. He didn't have any help, and that, that's the challenge here, you know? It, and you can't go to sleep. Okay, when number 90 is in front of me, oh boy, I, I know i got to hunker down and play, but this Bears front, the rotation they can throw at you, you better be ready to play against every one of these guys each snap. Diamond Oprah! Diamond Oprah! So the Jaguars force back 10 yards on first and 20. It's Jones Drew. Erlacher in on the tackle gain of just two with five minutes remaining in the second quarter here in Jacksonville. And you talk about that defensive line that kept eight guys up and they're rotating them in, but guys who aren't getting in a lot of breaks are those linebackers right there. Look at Briggs. I mean, coming into the hole and landed it, Brian Erlacher right next to him. You know, when those defensive linemen hold those offensive linemen up, all of a sudden here come those two linebackers, and that's why they have so many tackles. Second down at 18, Gabbard out of the shotgun. And the pass is caught by Elliott. Takes it to the 37-yard line. Devin Elliott. And his fourth catch of the season, gain of 11. Good job by Kevin Elliott spinning out of this. Down at the bottom of the screen, working on Charles Tillman. Watch the little spin right here. Fake inside, go outside. <laughs> Charles yeah. Tillman, like a kick save in hockey, Kenny. Yeah, he knew he was beat on that one. Picked out that right leg. Did not make the stop. Seven. Gabbard fires on third down. The pass is caught for a first down by Cecil Shorts. So the Jaguars have done a very nice job converting today on third and long. They really have. And you don't usually see that against the Chicago Bears defense. I mean, this is the position they're trying to put the offense in all the time. And again, you know, I got to compliment Blaine Garrett on how he's playing in the pocket. I mean, he's standing in there with pressure around him and making good throws. For the Jaguars, that's their fourth conversion on third and seven plus. As Jones Drew is forced back after a short game. Maurice Jones Drew had that one long run of 20 yards, but other than that, the Bears have done a nice job. His other nine carries have resulted in a combined 10 yards. But that's the commitment to the run, and that allows you to stay competitive here in time of possession, Kenny. So I, I like it. And, you know, it, it's frustrating to me when somebody says, yeah, we played great run defense except for that 40 yard he broke on us. Well, a lot of times that big run comes because of the commitment to the run. Now on second and nine, here is Gabbard going deep, and it is Shorts once again. Cecil Shorts makes the catch for a Jaguars. First down, a 34-yard pass play.
Let's watch the release, see what he does to Jim Jennings. Oh, that is so nice. He beats him right away. Tim was leaning on an outside release, and he takes the easy path and goes inside. That's the area that Tim Jennings is struggling in today. He's getting beat right off of the release. Great concentration on the throw. One-handed, bring it in, secure it. Fusil Shorts, nice job. And now Jones through here to the backfield once again. Cecil Shorts goes out of Division Three Mount Union. He paid his own tuition, a three-time Division Three All-American. He's made some big plays for the Jaguars this season. Has touchdowns of 39 and 80 yards. And he has put Jags in terrific position as we hit the two-minute warning. Cecil Shorts, a couple of nice receptions on his drive. Gabbard is four for four. For 62 yards on this Jaguars drive. Second down and 11 with two minutes remaining. Gathered in trouble. Hit from behind. Lost the football. On the sack by Corey Wooten. The Bears, with tremendous pressure from their defense, forced the turnover. Question is, was the arm coming forward when it came out? Well, it's a turnover, so we'll get a, a chance to confirm this. Rule to turnover on the field. Most turnovers, automatic reviews. So Corey Wooten with the sack. Julius Peppers, the recovery. I tell you, that's awful close. Awful close. For the first time this season, most turnovers are looked at automatically so Ron Winter will take a look and we welcome in our rules analyst Mike Pereira from Los Angeles Mike what did you see on that play well I see it is so close that you go back to what was called on the field originally which is a fumble and I do think before the hand starts forward that the ball comes loose in his hands from the contact so I think they got to stay with that all right, thanks, Mike. So the ruling on the field was upheld. Cutler and the Bears in the two-minute drill, complete to that forte, out to the 31-yard line. And that's one of the things that this Chicago Bear front will do to you. You're blocking them up the whole first half here. You're down in the two-minute situation with an opportunity for points, and it's Corey Wooten makes the big play. I think there's so much depth in that defensive line. Go. Second down and two. Chicago to Forte once again for Bears first down out to the 43-yard line. Chicago with all three timeouts. Corey Wooten with that sack. Darrell best remembered for the sack that ended Brett Favre's career. His last ever play in the NFL suffered the concussion on the sack from Wooten up in Minnesota. Two and a half sacks for Wooten this season. Butler moving to his right on first down. There is a penalty marker. As the catch is made by Kellen Davis. Clock stops due to the flag. We're going with it. Holding. Offense number 72. Yard penalty. Repeat first down. Right tackle game, Karimi. Big guy right there. Yeah, nice inside move. Once a defender is even or past you, Jeremy Mincy, you got to let him go. 51. Karimi, first round pick out of Wisconsin last year. So the Bears forced back down to the 33-yard line. 57 seconds remaining in the half. Bears with all three timeouts. As Cutler steps up and throws complete to Brandon Marshall. Couple of nice moves. Marshall to the 47. Yeah, that, that's where he's dangerous. You know, he's a big body, but he is so good after the catch, and he comes up hurt after that. Uh, Marshall remains down. Bears use a timeout. 15-yard reception by number 15. anything right there but you can see as soon as he comes up he's favoring that right leg so 
So the Bears medical staff tending to Brandon Marshall. How about the story Cutler told us yesterday? They were teammates, of course, in Denver. So the trade is made in March. Cutler's on a plane. Marshall's texting him throughout the day, but does not get a response because Cutler was flying. Jay lands in Los Angeles, and the most recent text from Brandon Marshall, are you mad about this deal? <laughs> Had to get back to him right away and tell him he was out of the country. Yeah, I don't think he was mad at all about this one. Looks like when he planted that right foot, it rolled a little bit. He's jogging off the field right now. Marshall with four receptions today. Look at the size right there, Kenny. 6'4", 230 as a wide receiver. It's unbelievable how big these guys have gotten on the outside and how athletic they still are. That's a tight end back when I was playing. Incredible size, three-time Pro Bowler. Holds the NFL record, a 21 reception game against the Colts back in 2009. Cutler three for three on this drive. Second down and five from the 47. Cutler steps up and throws, and that pass is behind the antenna receiver, Devin Hester. What's coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt Benefee? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll have highlights from a busy day in the NFL, including an emotional upset victory for the Colts. The Falcons remain perfect while RG3 leaves with an injury, and the Dolphins surprise the Bengals in Cincinnati. So join me, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy on the Visa Halftime. We'll see you then. All right, Kurt, we look forward to it. Falcons 5-0 for the first time in franchise history. Here in Jacksonville, we are tied at three. Third down and five. Cutler throws, and Devin Hester able to make the catch with Rasheed Mathis all over him. First reception for Hester today, 11 yards to the Bears' first down. Second timeout taken by the Bears. This is a good catch by Devin Hester. He's got some tight coverage here. Fit it in. You can see they're battling. He and Rasheed Mathis right at the point of that catch. Good concentration on the ball by Devin Hester. And now, he's a guy, and Mike Ty said this, you know, we've, we've got to create a package for Devin Hester, and, and we've got to get him involved in the game early. So here we are sitting with 35 seconds left, and really his first opportunity, even in special teams, he's really only had that one return we saw come across the field. So he's one of those guys that if you can get the ball in his hand early, whether it's a screen, a reverse, a short pass, get him kind of excited and going, you've got another weapon in the passing game. Well, everybody stops and watches. Whenever Devin Hester has the ball in his hand, Everyone knows at any moment they're going to be a huge play. And that reception goes to Hunter for Hester's career. Going to touchdown in Dallas on Monday. One timeout remaining for Chicago as Cutler fires to the outside, looking for Marshall, who has returned. So with 30 seconds remaining, now second and 10. Been out of sync on that back shoulder throw all afternoon. Whether it's Brandon Marshall, all Sean Jeffrey, just haven't quite been in sync with Jay Cutler through the first half. Mike Tice calls the plays. Jeremy Bates, the quarterback coach, sends the bid to Cutler. Second and 10. From the 43. Cutler moves to his right, throws low. It could not be handled by Forte. Third down and 10 coming up. Like Gabe Karimi moved before the ball was snapped. Surprised he didn't get an offsides on that play. Karimi flagged earlier. So with 26 seconds on the clock, third down and 10, Bears with one timeout in a 3 3 game. And now it looks like timeout. the Chicago. Bears use the final timeout, timeout with the clock stopped. Not exactly what Jay Cutler had in mind. Well, Fox, tonight the scariest night of the year is tonight. Why? Because the Simpsons say it is. And you know what that means. An all-new Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. It's all part of a hilarious night of an all-new Halloween episode starting tonight at 8, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Yeah, the, uh, the game clock stops on that incomplete game, but that play clock is still running, and I think they got, they were a little slow getting back into the huddle. 
to get that play called. And we talked about it at the top. And it's one of those things that, that really get under Jay Cutler's skin is when that tempo gets disrupted for whatever reason. So the Bears out of timeouts. Facing a third down and 10. They must get to the Jaguars 32. Ronnie Gordon, the kicker, also told me he's good at 60 yards, so if it's not there, he should throw it out of bounds and try for a field goal. Well, right now, it would be about 60, 61 yard attempt. Goose. Forte split to the left, empty backfield on third down. As Cutler throws, and the pass was a bit high, deflected off the hands of Sons and Bacher. There's some good coverage across the board by the Jacksonville Jaguars on this play. Again, Derek Cox has had a nice afternoon here the first half against Brandon Marshall. That's a big, tough challenge for him. You got Aaron Ross working the underneath coverage on Sonsenbacher. So Goose Levy Smith elects to yeah, send out the punting unit instead of attempting the 60-yard field goal. Aaron Ross back deep for the Jacks. And it takes a Jacksonville bounce into the end zone with 12 seconds remaining in the half. Cutler and the Bears tied at three with the Jaguars. Well, next week, Foxtoberfest continues. Game one of the National League Championship Series next Sunday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox. National League Division Series both underway. St. Louis Cardinals leading the Washington Nationals 2-1 to at the top of the sixth inning. That is DeJuan Landry. Jaguars strong safety wobbling off the field. Jaguars will run out the clock as Gabbert takes a knee. So the Bears and Jaguars head to their respective locker rooms at halftime, tied at three here in Jacksonville. Bears coming off the big win in Dallas on Monday night. Stay tuned for the Visa Halftime Report with Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. It's coming up after these messages. Having lost today, Bears come in at three and one, but held to three points in the first half. Well, you wonder if this offense really needs to feed off the defense. Chicago, I'm talking about Chicago. Last week, Monday night, you know, it's late in the first half with no score. It's the defense that makes the big play, and all of a sudden, that offense gets on track. And, you know, you wonder the short week and everything that went on. You know, you have to overcome adversity. You don't want it to become an excuse. And I was, I didn't think they played well in the first half, but let's credit Jacksonville a little bit. You know, some areas that we thought there were some matchup issues. The offensive line played well. The defense didn't get to Jay Cutler, but they made a move, reset a few times. So uh, I'm not going to say that this is totally Chicago not playing well. Jacksonville played much better than they did last week against Cincinnati. Hester on the return. There is a flag as Devin Hester steps out of bounds at the 33. During the return, holding number 27 return to you. 10 yard penalty, first down. Sherrick McManus, the guilty bear. First half numbers, down. You look at right there, third downs is the one that jumps out at me. The Jacksonville Jaguars, five for nine, over 50% on third down. A couple of those long third downs, third and 13, third and 14, third and eights. You know, that's something that Chicago takes a lot of pride in, so very effective on their one scoring drive. 81 yards on the ground for the Bears. Matt Forte averaging nearly six yards per carry. And they begin the second half. What a handoff from Cutler to Forte, Goose, for a gain of two. Talked to Lovey Smith coming out, and I asked him, I said, you know, what do you need to do in the second half? He goes, Goose, I'm just happy we have a second half. Horrible first half for our team. Offensively, defensively, special teams. I asked him why the defensive line are doing a lot of stunts and why isn't he pass rushing one-on-one. -on -one. He says, we're not getting any kind of pass rush. I'm trying to move those guys around. We talked about it in the open. Three things they need to do. Beat the heat. I don't know if they've done that. 
dominate the Jaguars' offensive line. They have not done that yet, this, the defense for the Bears, and stop Maurice Jones-Drew, which they're getting accomplished. But uh, they need to get all three of those in order to be classified, in my opinion, as a great dominating defense. The Goose off the play fake. Tucker was under pressure, took a hit. Jeremy Mincy with the Jaguars' pressure. Well, they're going to force the pressure up beyond him. He's going to step up in the pocket, but here it comes from the backside. Jeremy Mincy, right as he's getting ready to throw the ball, fighting through two tight ends. Looks like they're getting more comfortable with that secondary and the way that they're covering. They're bringing them extra linebackers now down and bring that fifth guy into the rush. It should be effective. Third down and eight, Bears must get to the 21. Here comes pressure again. Cutler throws, and it is Brandon Marshall who goes up and makes the catch for a Chicago first down across the 30, a 17-yard pass play. Now, they only bring four defensive linemen on this, but they're getting some push. Cutler feels it, gets rid of the ball, but Brandon Marshall does a great job of coming right over the top, settling down right there, right over the middle, getting the ball, getting down, getting that first down. Fifth perception for Brandon Marshall. New set of downs for the Bears. On the 32-yard line, it's Forte. And that Forte is upended by the Jaguars' leading tackler this season. His fourth season out of San Diego State, Russell Allen. Early third quarter here in Jacksonville. Cutler... 11 of 22. Five yards per carry for Matt Forte and five receptions for Brandon Marshall. But the Bears have not been able to reach the end zone. They drove 77 yards, but were held to a field goal in the first quarter. Cutler on second and 10. It's Marshall again. And Marshall looking to circle back and pick up extra yardage is down at the 38 after a six yard pickup. I tell you what, he sure earns his pay. I mean, he's running short crossing routes right back into the middle of the field where all the defenders are pursuing. Tell you what, Jay Cutler, we're watching him on that play from down here on the field, Darrell, giving little hand signals, okay, to Brandon. No, they're on the same page. Knew he was going to him. He gave him a little hand signal on the line of scrimmage. They had eye contact, and they're on the same page right now. So watch him going to him more often. And he throws it high so nobody else can get it. Third down and four. Cutler's pass is caught for a first down by Dane Sonsenbacher moving up the depth chart with Earl Bennett still out. And for Sonsenbacher, that is his first catch this season. Now, you talk about it all the time, about the tempo of an offense. And that's one thing different that I see in this second half with the Chicago's offense compared to the first half. Yeah, the one time that they were able to establish it was that scoring drive in the first half. They've come out here in the second half and gotten into a nice rhythm again. Bear started this drive. On their 11-yard line, following the penalty on the return. Butler in trouble on first down, and he is wrapped up by Austin Reed, who missed the entire preseason, missed the first three games. It is his first sack of 2012. Just continue to work. When you're rushing four guys, you know, just keep working, working, working. They're going to be guys in the middle getting the push, too. They're a big part of it, getting their hands up. It's a collective rush right there. And I, I think that that's something on that play that we didn't see consistently in the first half, Tony. You talked about it. The edge rushers were coming around the corner well, but Jay Cutler was able to step up and make some throws. He couldn't on that play. And that is the first Jacksonville sack in their last four games. Only their third of the season. Second down at 15. Cutler over the middle. It's Marshall. Time for another game break. We head to Los Angeles. Here's Kurt. Well, Carolina's Cam Newton, only 3 of 16 in the game, but his defense is bailing him out. Here, Captain Munderland picks off. Russell Wilson takes it back 33 yards. Only touchdown in the game so far, but it's enough to have the Panthers in the lead in the third quarter. 10-6. Can he lose some goose? Interesting discussion on the pregame show with the guys there, whether it was time to maybe make a change at quarterback with Russell Wilson. And, and we'll have to wait and see what Pete Carroll does. He's all about competition. We'll see if he opens that up here in the next couple weeks. Seahawks signed Matt Flynn during the offseason, the former Packer. 
Butler on third and nine. It's Marshall again. And as he went down, he lost the football. But he was ruled down by contact, which cannot be challenged. But Marshall stopped about a yard and a half shy of the marker. Trying to stretch that big six foot four inch frame to get beyond that marker for the first down. You see, there's the knee. He's down. So the Bears going for it on fourth down as Levy Smith leaves his offense on the field. In Jaguars territory, two tight ends set. Fourth down and one. Butler to throw on fourth down. He pump fakes. Now he throws and the catch is made for a first down at the Jaguars 32. And there is a flag. Looks like a late hit on the quarterback, Jay Cutler, as Marshall picks up a first down. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Roughing the quarterback. 15-yard penalty. First down. I'm going to give this first down to Jay Cutler because the Jacksonville Jaguars have everything covered right here. He's going to ad-lib it, slide out a little bit. There you see the late hit by Jeremy Mincy. Going to the helmet, you can see Jay Cutler tapping the head. But Tony talked about Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall being in sync. And when you go for it on a fourth down and you're looking downfield and that's the one guy you're trying to find, there's some more proof that they're getting into a rhythm. They had two big years together in Denver at 07 and 08. Cutler with six straight completions, hands it off on first down to Forte. And he's tackled from behind by Terrence Knight. Well, you come in after that first half, and, and Lovey Smith's not happy with the way that the team played in any of the phases of the game. And this is a nice drive to respond to a challenge by your coaching staff. Landon Marshall down with five receptions on this drive alone. He had four in the first half. On second and six, Forte with a bit of a delay. And then he's wrapped up by a trio of Jaguars. That was nice timing on that blitz by the Jacksonville Jaguars during their standard defense. And late in that cadence, the linebackers come up on the edges and catch the Chicago Bears running off the edge. Bears have driven 73 yards, now facing a third down and eight. That's Marshall. In the slot to the right. Butler steps up on third down. He will take off, looking for the marker. And Cutler takes a hard hit at the end of the run, needed to get to the eight, and Cutler, with his legs, picks up a Bears first down. It's a good, quick decision. You drop back, there's nobody there. You realize that they vacated that hole right flat. So pull the ball down, tuck it, use your legs to get that first down. Yeah, you better learn how to slide a little bit, too, because these defensive backs, man, they're going to go right at your legs. Doesn't look like Jake Cutler has any thigh pads on right now. He gets a good helmet or, or a knee in that thigh. That's not fun. Well, it looked like he thought about sliding goose, but if you slide, you're down at your initial point of contact. You well, need, get out of bounds. Do we need it to pick up the extra yardage? So first and goal as Cutler looks to swing it out to Michael Bush, and it's incomplete. So second and goal upcoming. Bears have run seven and a half minutes off the clock here in the third quarter. It's been a good mix, and it's, you know, it's the short passes to Brandon Marshall. You're giving the ball to Matt Forte every once in a while, converting on third downs on this drive. This will be the 15th play of this drive. Jeffrey split wide to the left. Marshall to the right. On second and goal, off the fake to Bush. Cutler throws underneath, and Marshall... Tackled at the four by Buzz Lusting. These linebackers need to go and find out exactly where certain receivers are. Yeah, but Brandon Marshall, he's crossing the field, Tony, but look at the flat. He's got Kyle Adams out in the flat. I think that's your bigger play right now. So you don't want to overthink it. 
where you're getting locked into Brandon Marshall on all your plays. You still got to go through your progression. But Paul Puzlesny needs to go and stay square on that so he can come back and get involved on that tackle with Brandon Marshall. Marshall with six receptions on his drive has ten in the game. Third and goal. Well, just outside the three. Penalty markers and the play is blown dead. It's a false start. False start. Offense number 72. Bobby McKinley remains third down. That is Gabe Karimi again. His second penalty. Also beaten for a sack earlier this drive. Number 72 on the left side of your screen right there. You see it's just a little tweak. So the Bears force back five yards. Third and goal from the eight. Bears empty the backfield. They got him again. More flags. Another false start. I think it was Karimi again. False start. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty. Karimi's third penalty. He's been flagged on consecutive plays. Now you see the tap. You see Lance Lewis taps the center. So now, now Gabe Karimi's got to get into the rhythm. You know, he's got his eyes down there. He sees the tap, but it's not going to go right away. You know, as you get your eyes back refocused on your man, understand there's a rhythm, rhythm that they establish on that silent count. Lowry's going up to the line of scrimmage. No free safety back here. This is all wide open on the back side. We'll see if Cutler takes advantage. Cutler throws. End zone. And it is broken up. Pass intended for Marshall. Well, the free safety came up, and they doubled Brandon Marshall right off the line of scrimmage. Lowry's down right now. Uh, physical release off the line of scrimmage by Brandon Marshall. And that was Dwight Lowry that went up high to make that deflection and come hard down on the ground. He's up high. That's a long fall. Yeah, right on his hip. So Lowry able to make the play. Keeps Marshall out of the end zone. Today's business travel challenge, stop or non-stop. The other airlines versus Southwest. These businesswomen have long flights to their conference, but the other airlines contestant has a connecting flight. The care. By Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. And by Internet Explorer, welcome to a more beautiful web. Back in Jacksonville, another long drive for the Bears, but they are kept out of the end zone. And we talk about converting in the red zone. Let's go back to these scoring drives if Robbie Gold connects here. 28 plays, 15 minutes and 25 seconds in time for 153 yards, and it would only be six points 31 yard attempt from the left hash gold hit from 32 earlier he is now two for two so the bears now lead the jaguars by three penetrated to the jaguars three but then back-to-back -back fall starts called on gabe karimi and Chicago has to settle for another field goal. You saw the numbers on that drive. It's an impressive drive, but to only get the three points, and yeah, there's nothing worse. Negative plays in the red zone. Return all start penalties. Rashad Jennings takes it out for the Jaguars to the 25. So with five and a half remaining in the third quarter, our first look this half at the Jags offense. Three there's back up Jason Campbell, the former Redskin Raider. On the right, Jaguars start from their own 25 after a drive of nearly nine and a half minutes by the Bears to start this third quarter. Maurice Jones-Drew tries to turn the corner. There is a flag. Jones-Drew gains just one. Holding. Offense number 75. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Left tackle Eugene Monroe. Well, you try to stop Julius Peppers any way you possibly can. Little latch on the outside. You got to let him go on that. 
the officials look at exactly where the ball is. If the defender can go and make a play on the ball, they're going to call that every single time. And again, you're talking about Julius Peppers. You try to deflect him any way you possibly can. One of the all-time breaks. First down and 20. Gabbert with time. Fires and it is picked off by Charles Talbot. Talbot inside the 10, the 5, and he is in for a Bears touchdown. Unbelievable, this Bears defense. And a bad decision by Dwayne. Standing right behind Ben Gabbert. I mean, there was no way he should have thrown this ball. Tillman's got his head back, watching him the whole time. The ball is underthrown. I mean, that's just throw and catch right there. And the Bears do what they do best, turn and put points on the board as a defense. Yeah, we've seen them try and jam at the line of scrimmage, and we've seen a couple of the Jaguar receivers get beyond Tim Jennings. That time, Charles Tillman bailed, which means as soon as the ball is snapped, he's getting out. He's running stride for stride with Justin Blackman down the field. Blaine Gabbert should have gotten away from that side of the field. Charles Tillman sets a new franchise record. It's his eighth career defensive touchdown. He had been tied with Mike Brown. And get this. Last time the Bears scored a defensive touchdown in three straight games, 1950. Five yard interception return. Last time the Bears scored a defensive touchdown in three straight games, November of 1950. It is their fourth in the last. Jennings on the return, there is a flag. I don't know what Lovey Smith said to his team at halftime, but he should bottle it because now all three phases have just wreaked havoc here against Jacksonville to start this second half. Well, he, you know, I tried to put it very During nicely. The return, holding number 33 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, a little bit of deja vu there. He did the same thing last week going into halftime and, and blew open a close game. And here it is this week. Six to three, Chicago had a nice drive, but struggling once they get to the red zone. Hey, defense, come on, let's make a play. I forgot to mention that Lovey had smoke coming out of his nose and ears when he was telling me about what he talked about at halftime. <laughs> well, he's pretty happy now. Four flags. False start. Offense number 77. Half the distance to the goal. It remains first down. Uche Waneri, the right guard. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile now. Get coverage of every NFL game. So the last five plays the Jaguars have attempted to run down. The sack fumble in the second quarter. Took a knee to end the first half. Then in the third quarter, penalty. Interception for a touchdown. Another penalty. As Gabbard fires downfield, it's intended for Blackman, and then nearly intercepted on the deflection by Conti with Jennings on the coverage. Yeah, Tim Jennings was in perfect position, and we, we've got the potential for another interception if Justin Blackman doesn't go up and make a nice play on the football. That's good work by both those guys. Tim Jennings in great position for this throw, and then Justin Blackman going up and making a play so it's not interception. A couple of Jaguars offensive players break up potential interceptions. Mercedes Lewis earlier. Second and 13. Gabbard in the end zone. He throws. And it's Lewis. We're getting back to Levy Smith's philosophy on defense. Number one priority is to score on defense. And we heard Michael Strahan on the pregame show. He said Lovey told him our defense is an offense. Oh, well, look at what they've done the last few weeks. That's a heck of a catch by Mercedes Lewis right there. But th this defense is, is so opportunistic. And when you take the fact that they're taking the ball the way, at the rate they're doing it, they're, they're pressuring the quarterback, the sacks that they're getting. It's, this is a tough group. Last three games, the Bears' defense has more touchdowns than the Chicago offense. Four for the defense, three for the offense. Here's Gabbert in trouble, and he is sacked. It is Lance Briggs with his first sack of the season as this Bears defense continues their tremendous play. 
They don't have to pressure very often to get to the quarterback. This time they bring Lance Briggs. Mercedes Lewis, who's a good blocking tight end. I, I don't know if he recognized it late. He was out of position. Lance Briggs was able to get to the inside and get that sack. Second bear sack today. Brian Agra lined up deep in his end zone. The way this half is going, expect a big return from Devin Hester here. Hester waiting for it. At the 43, there is a flag. Hester tackled at the 44-yard line by Julian Stanford. I don't think it's just the defense, Kenny, but I think when special teams goes out there, <laughs> they're thinking about scoring as well. So and Lovey Smith having the luxury of all three phases of his team with the ability to score points. During the kick, holding number 27 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Sherrick McManus has his, his share of penalties here on special teams this game. So the Bears back on offense with a 10 point lead. Marinelli as the defensive coordinator or the assistant offensive coordinator? Maybe the assistant offensive coordinator. More defensive touchdowns for the Bears the last three games. Now Cutler and the offense back to work. Here's Michael Bush. He spins away and then dives forward for a Chicago first down. I, I can't tell you how big it is, you know, as an offense to know that you have a defense that if you've come out and you're not playing well, that they can they can make a play, they can create something happen to, to generate that excitement, that emotion on the sideline. There's one of the guys over the last couple of weeks, Charles Tillman, doing a heck of a job. 57. Play for the Ravens. Hey. Single. <laughs> you throw the Ravens comment in the background for Goose. <laughs> Here's Bush up the middle. What are you saying, Darrell, that over there in Dallas, when you guys won all those Super Bowls, your defense wasn't getting it done? No, we had actually had a number one defense. Everybody talked about the offense, but we had a number one defense. <laughs> Goose, I guess no, you're referring is, to the five straight nice. games without an offensive touchdown, and you guys won three of them back well, in 2000. you know what? It's nice as a defense when you go out there and you play together so long and you know each other and you have it dialed in. One thing that's great about this defense is, is what they do is very simple. They only run eight defenses. You know, Chicago Bears defense only runs eight defenses. They run a couple of variations, but they go out there and they dominate and they, and they just play ball. They what would, what would, what would, what would a normal number be? What would an average number be as far as how many different defenses an NFL well, team runs? It all depends on who your coordinator is. Like when I first got to Baltimore, I mean, Marvin Lewis, we, we, we've had in the upwards of 50 defenses. Wow. You know, with special team, with, with the you know short yardage, goal line in there, blitzes, dogs, zone blitzes, uh, you know, nickel, dime, you know, depending on who you have. But you know, when you have a defense like the Bears have, I mean, they just go, they line up, you know what they're going to be in. They're either going to be in single high or they're going to be in, in, in too deep, and they're just going to say, okay, come on, beat us. And, and and that's what good defenses do that have played together because they play off each other. 55 defense. That's a lot of studying for you and the guys. Here's Cutler on third and six, and Brandon Marshall picks up another Bears first down, his 11th catch today, and he is over 100 yards. And this is a heck of a wrap, but to be able to throw this route, you've got to have the time, and the Bears offensive line gives him the time to throw it. Brandon Marshall runs a heck of a route. Watch, he's got me sold. He's going to the middle. He had Derek Cox sold. He was going to the middle of the field. A nice quick break to the outside. 11 receptions, 119 yards for Marshall. A minute and a half remaining, third quarter. We were tied at three at the half. Bears now lead by 10, and they are on the move. Cutler's pass this time is short, intended for the rookie Jeffrey. Once he starts to understand and once he develops the chemistry with Jay Cutler that we've seen 
with Brandon Marshall today. This is a, this is going to be a tough combination. And we they've been looking for one wide receiver here in for Chicago for a long time. They've they've found two. They've gonna, they're going to have two good ones by the end of the year on the outside. And Lovey Smith told us yesterday Earl Bennett back to back in the Bears next game against Detroit following their bye. On second and ten, Cutler steps up, throws across the field looking for Hester, and a good play by Rasheen Mathis to get the handout in front of Devin Hester. That ball looked like it floated. I don't know if it got tipped or what. Let's see, Jay, Jay Cutler drops back. He's got some pressure on the outside, steps up. It just came off his arm, <laughs> like very different. Look at the ball, it's just up there. I, I thought it was going to be deflected. I thought we were going to see on the replay that it got deflected, but it might be the uh, the humidity yeah. out there. Slipped right out of his hands. Third down and ten. Three receiver set. Play clock at two. And a penalty marker. False start, Chicago. False start. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. That's Kellen Davis. Time for a game break. Kurt Benefee. Seahawks with the second-ranked defense in the league, and they look like it on this play. Against Carolina, D'Angelo Williams takes the pick, but Brandon Browner strips him, and the defense recovers. The offense makes it pay. Russell Wilson hooking up with Golden Tate, 13 yards on the score. Seahawks lead it at Carolina, 13-10, as they start the fourth quarter. Kenny Wilson goes. So Golden Tate, a conventional touchdown. No simultaneous possession. No, not this time. <laughs> Throw down at 15 as Cutler dumps it off to Bush. Bush hurdles for a first down. What a great athletic play by Bush. I thought he was going to be stopped short. I think he would have if it wasn't yeah. for Roberto Garza getting out on the screen, the center from the Chicago Bears. That's a nice job, good vision. Look at that hurdle, huh? Mm hmm Right over the top of Chris Brzezinski. Derek Cox there as well. It's got to be 24. Time winding down to this third quarter. Hey, look, New set of downs for look, Chicago. Bears lead 13-3. Cutler hands it off to Bush. Bush finds a hole and takes it to the 10-yard line for another Bears first down, a gain of 11. As the clock winds down and now an injured Jaguar. Juan Landry, the strong safety. Well, there could be some cramping. We've talked about with the wind chill. The wind chill is probably about 87. <laughs> so Landry walks it off. There's with a field goal at the end of a 17 play drive, and then less than a minute later, the Bears defense does it again. Charles Tillman with the interception. Took it all the way back. Third quarter comes to an end with the Bears leading the Jaguars. 13-3. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local station. Chicago Bears dominate the third quarter. Jaguars ran only four plays. So we begin the fourth. 13-3, Chicago, first and goal from the Jaguars, 10. Cutler on first down to the end zone, touchdown! Alshon Jeffrey with his second touchdown of the season. I tell you what, this shows you the potential with all Sean Jeffrey. This is really tight coverage, but watch as he gets his head around the reaction with his hands, getting him up to make this catch. And it's an awkward catch there. That's tight coverage, battling all the way into the end zone. You know, Darrell, you talked about opportunities for a lot of these other guys, Devin Hester, Ashlyn Jeffrey, with Brandon Marshall out there and the way that, uh, you know, uh, Jay Cutler's been going after him. They've been, everyone's been paying attention to them. And, uh, you know, Ashlyn Martin, all Sean Jeffrey, I mean, is going to be getting uh, some opportunities to capitalize just on that one. Second round pick out of South Carolina. Here's Gold, adding the extra point. 
It is now 20 to three Chicago. Jeffrey into the end zone. Back in Jacksonville, Chicago Bears have taken over this game. Tied at three at the half. Bears drive 17 plays for a field goal. Nine minute, 18 second drive. Start the third here in Jacksonville. Jaguars 0-2 at home so far this season. They trail by 17. Well, all Sean Jeffrey left the field while we were in commercial. Let's see what happens here. They're looking at his, kind of at his right hand. And as you watch him battle the whole time, it kind of looks as though he's trying to get it out there like he'd heard it prior to the catch. But it, it's so hard to see. But he has jogged off the field and into the locker room. You see he's in pain with his face. Keep an eye on that for you. So now Calvert to the Jaguars. who have run only five of the last 41 plays in this game. Calvert looks to set up the screen. It's Lewis. And he loses a yard, tackled at the 19. Time for another game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Okay, how about Florida native Frank Gore doing it after all these years for San Francisco. 31 yards on the run here against Buffalo. Two plays later, he makes sure he caps it off with a touchdown. 49ers in firm control of 24-3. That one in the third quarter. Can the lose and goose? All right, thanks, Kurt. We saw the 49ers the last two weeks, and Darrell, despite their loss to the Vikings on the road two weeks ago, you feel the 49ers up until this point, best team in football. As Jones Drew picks up a first down and more, and he is finally tackled by Chris Conti, Maurice. Jones Drew gains 27 yards. And that's what happens when you commit to the run. We talked in the first half, Kenny, where, you know, he had that one big 20-yard run. But other than that, not a lot of production. And you just stay with it, stay with it. They get the upfield penetration by Stephen Paya. They turn him outside. That means you're able to get the guard immediately up to the linebacker level. And then you hit it quick right behind everybody. Nice little short trap. On the 41, there's Gabbard. Over the top to Jones Drew, but Nick Roach right there to wrap him up. Gain of just two. Just for this Jacksonville offense, just to get a few snaps on the field here. You pointed out, Kenny, only four plays in that third quarter. And one of them cost him seven points. Gabbard making his 19th career start. First round pick a year ago, who was the third quarterback selected after Cam Newton and Jake Locker left Missouri after his junior year. Now the slant, and Blackman unable to make the catch. It's ruled an incomplete pass on the field. And to talk to Mike Malarkey, he worked with Matt Ryan for the last four years. As we take one more look, Matt Ryan spent five years at Boston College. Wayne Gabbert came out a year early, only three years in school, so at his age, at least football-wise, Matt Ryan was still at BC at this point. Absolutely. There'd, there'd be another year before you know, Matt Ryan would have come out of school. And for Blaine Gabbert, that's what we talk about, his maturity and where he's at at this stage. So. And he lost a lot of Atlanta Falcons film during the offseason, third down and eight. So miscommunication with Blackman. And you've got a young quarterback, you've got young receivers on the outside. So, again, as, as they start to, you know, create their identity and what they want to do as an offense, these things will improve. But you're going you're to have plays like this during the course, of, especially when you go against a defense like the Chicago Bears. Another opportunity for Devin Hester. 18 career return touchdowns in only 96 games. An incredible rate. Badger punts from the 38. Taken out the 13 by Hester. Now comes to the outside. Spins back the other way. And he's knocked out at the 11. There's a late flag. He got a lot of east-west running. But Hester loses two yards. And it looks like the Bears will be penalized. Oh, they, they've done a nice job all afternoon long, the Bears punt coverage team. Great lane integrity, which means as they come down the field to cover, they're not moving. They're in the return. Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask. Number 23 in the return team. 
Got the distance to the goal. First down. Yeah, he, he is so elusive and so fast that if you get out of your lane, you give him a chance for a big touchdown. So just some more examples of great coverage by the Jaguars. Four, it's the worst starting field position for the Bears. Twelve and a half remaining fourth quarter. Chicago with 17 second half points. Now lead 20 to three. See if this Jacksonville defense can not make a stop right here, get the ball back for their offense. It's one of the things that this Chicago Bear team did in the third quarter. Tony talked about how disappointed Lovey Smith was with their performance in the first half. They functioned very, very well in all three phases through that first that third quarter. Second down and six. Butler fires downfield for Hester. Wow. And David Hester makes a diving catch. And he's shaking up. Nate Cutler makes a great read on this. They roll the safeties, go single high. He knows he got Devin Hester one on one. Let him perfectly. Devin Hester runs right under it. Great catch. Concentration to bring the ball in. Ah, that's a great catch right there. A 40 yard completion. Now you saw the ball may have hit the ground, but it was all in the process of the catch. He never lost control. Well, the Bears have hurried up to the line of scrimmage. I think they wanted to get the ball snapped before a challenge could be thrown, but Devin Hester. Jacksonville, the challenge are rolling on the field on a completed pass. I don't think Malarkey's going to win this one. Well, you know, it's very similar right now with the angle we show you right there. It's what Mike Pereira said before. If, if we can't find that evidence to overturn it, it will stay the way it was called on the field. Forty-yard reception by Devin Hester. Mike Malarkey has challenged, and if you're Malarkey, why not? May as well. The three of us think that it will not be overturned. That it is a catch by Hester. And we'll head to Los Angeles. Our rules analyst, Mike Pereira, once again. Mike, what do you think? Well, I think it's a, a catch, too, because they ruled it a catch on the field. You know, the question is here, does he get control with his right arm before the ball hits the ground, and then does he maintain it afterwards? And when he rolls over, there's nothing to me that really shows that he lose possession of it. So I don't know how they can change um, the ruling based on that information. I think that's the best angle right there, Mike, is it's kind of that one gray area, and it, it kind of proves your point that he never seemed to have lost control through the process. And Ron Winter can piece all of the replays together. Here comes Ron. After review, ruling on the field stands. First down. Well, that ruling, that announcement from Ron Winter will make Devin Hester feel Jackson better. Jacksonville is charged with a team timeout. I, that, that was one of the best catches I've seen this season so far. I mean, that is totally laid out. I mean, extended, grabbing it on the fingertips, pulling it back to the body, and maintaining possession through the process. Looked like the medical staff applied eye drops to Hester's left eye while we were away. As he came down hard on his face mask. First and ten for the Bears. From their 49-yard line, this is Forte into Jaguars territory. And he's finally dragged down by Kyle Bosworth, Ryan's nephew, gain of nine. Well, Saturday, Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, and Joey Harrington get you ready for kickoff with the Fox College Saturday pregame show, followed by exciting doubleheader action with two Pac-12 showdowns. Utah to UCLA, then USC and Washington. Coverage of Fox College football begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. Your alma mater is one added on Friday night, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Great, Kenny, yeah. great. What Big a great victory for the Orangemen. Yeah. Here's the thing I would have brought it up if you were up here next to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice job by the Orangemen. Second and one. Forte, another Chicago first down as we head to Los Angeles. Here's Kurt. Well, it's been a rough game so far for Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos taking on New England. One of two sacks in this game that wasn't pretty for Manning. He gives up the ball, Vince Wilford recovers, and a couple of plays later, Stephen Ridley takes it in from eight yards out. He's over 100 yards rushing. 
And the Patriots with firm control up 31 to 7 in the third quarter. Can it do some things? New England putting up a lot of points once again. That's a, that's a pretty good 2 and 2 team, the New England Patriots. On the 31, it's 4-10. He's on his feet. And he's finally wrapped up and forced out by Bosworth. As we hit 10 minutes remaining, fourth quarter, we alluded to the San Francisco 49ers earlier. And you were telling us during the week, you feel they are at the top of the power rankings despite their one loss. I do. I do. And I know that Houston's undefeated right now, and the Atlanta Falcons are undefeated, and they're two very good teams. But I think when you look at San Francisco as a whole, and I think one of the areas that really kind of gives them the advantage, in my opinion, is special teams, you know, with David Akers and... Andy Lee out there controlling field position, you know, field goals uh, when they get into the scoring area. So you like the old school. Well, run, you know, run I, the ball, play defense. Yeah, but I also like the fact that they admitted when they got beat by Minnesota, we just we didn't play well. You know what Chicago did here in the first half. Chicago came out and didn't play well in the first half, and and Lovey challenged his team. They've come out. They've had an outstanding second half. Forte stops short. 49ers leading the Bills 31 to three. Chicago with a win today would raise their record to 4-1. and one. Minnesota shutting out Tennessee 22-0 at the end of the third quarter. So the surprising Vikings would remain tied atop the NFC North with the Bears at 4-1. and one. Packers lost today for the third time this season. Green Bay just 2-3. and three. Cutler on third down and three fires to the end zone and the catch is made by Marshall for a Chicago Bears touchdown. Everything that was going wrong for Chicago in the first half has gone right. And you can say the same thing about Jacksonville. They, they played a, a very good sec first half, but they haven't been able to come out and match it here. I mean, Derek Cox was very good in the first half in coverage. He's trailing the whole way there. Just a little double move right off the bat. Brandon Marshall gets on top, and it's an easy throw for Jay Cutler for the touchdown. Uh, Jay Cutler does a great do job of identi identifying exactly what the defense is going to do. They brought both safeties up, almost like on a short blitz, and uh, they're man-to-man -man on the outside. All you have to do is lay it up and get it done, and that's exactly what happened. All Chicago here in the second half. Options 144 yards, 12 catches, third most in a game for Marshall. NFL record 21 back in 2009 with Kyle Orton. Also caught 18 from Cutler in a game back in 2008. Those are big days. He's he's really Jaguars will start from their own 20-yard line, trailing 27 to three. Join the NFL and the American Cancer Society in the fight against breast cancer by supporting the. Crucial catch campaign. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid now on authentic NFL pink gear worn by players and coaches. Pink. This skin is here throughout the stands. Right? Suntan lotion. Doug Lowe starts from the 20. Gabbard's pass is caught by Elliott. Gate of four. Bears with 24 points, Darrell, in a span of 12 minutes, 5 seconds. And just dominating in, in, in every phase of the game. Well, the offense has finally caught up to the defense as far as the <laughs> touchdowns are concerned over the last three games. Five for the offense and four for the defense. Kurt Benefee. Well, Carolina down six inside the one-yard line. Fourth and goal, Cam Newton. With time to the end zone, and that was just not a pretty pass, not a good pass, not effective, not good for Carolina. 16 10 inside three minutes. Seattle will now try to run out the clock. Can he move some goose? How about that NFC West? Uh, I tell you what, yeah. they've been struggling for the last couple of seasons, but that's a pretty tough group out there this year. Rams with a win on Thursday over their division rivals. Penalty marker is thrown. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Zach Potter. Offside. 
Defense number 71 in the neutral zone to snap. Five yard penalty that results in a first down. Israel Adonijek. So if the Seahawks hang on, you would have all four teams in the NFC West with at least three wins. 16 10 Seattle over Carolina. Arizona 4 1. San Francisco with a 31 3 lead. So they will make it 4 1. St. Louis 3 2. And Seattle moments away from their third win. Pass deflected and picked off by Briggs. Lance Briggs with a touchdown on Monday night. And on Sunday afternoon, he takes it in for yet another Bears defensive score. Well, so much for the offense catching up to the defense. Yeah, they heard you, Kenny. What a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Two defensive touchdowns, back-to-back -back weeks. This group, and it's a culture. It's something you talk about all the time. We're going to take the ball away. When we do, we're trying to score. Look at him all the way up here. Walked into the line of scrimmage like he's blitzing. Pursuit to the ball, Tony. I mean, when that everybody's Get running, so if the ball's on the ground or the ball's tipped in the air, most likely a bear is going to come down with it. All those short underneath passes, the linebackers are just sitting on them. You know, you're down by more than three touchdowns. You got to go and, and, and launch that ball downfield and try to go get some, some points. Those underneath throws, are, uh, you might as well just run the ball if you're going to throw those little passes like that. Sixth career touchdown for Briggs, his second in two games. Gold the extra point. So the last three games, the Bears offense has scored five touchdowns, and the Bears defense has scored five touchdowns. Another high five. Briggs with his second touchdown the last two games. Bears with their fifth defensive touchdown the last three weeks. Uh, it's unbelievable, and, and you talk about a group that the first thing that the coaches want them to do is score. And, you know, sometimes those are just words, and you're trying to take advantages of opportunities. <laughs> but that's not the case for the Chicago Bears. Back-to-back it, -back weeks, it's Tillman Briggs. Two touchdowns for the Chicago Bears defense. Tillman and Briggs Monday in Dallas. Tillman and Briggs Sunday in Jacksonville. Unfortunately for this defense, Bears have a bye next week. <laughs> they might get rest at halftime. Bears with 31 second half points in the span of 12 minutes, 48 seconds. I think Howie made a great point at halftime when he talked about Chicago. If they want to be the team that they're talking about, if they want to compete in the NFC North for the division title, then this is a game they really should have won. And to be sitting 3-3 at halftime, you can understand why Lovey Smith was so frustrated with the performance of his team. And again, whatever he said at halftime, put it in a bottle, break it out pregame next week, next time you're on the field. Jaguars again start from their 20-yard line. Gabbert in trouble. Down he goes. Back at the 15. Corey Wooten. Henry Melton. Wooten had a sack earlier. Third sack for the Bears. Again, they're doing this with just four rushers. You know, you've got everybody walked up there showing the blitz look, but it's it's just four guys, and you've got two of them to the quarterback. And this is a completely different defensive line that we saw, like you pointed out, Daryl, in the first half. They weren't getting the pressure. They weren't moving. They weren't having fun. They were tight. Now, obviously, they got to go up through the air, and they know they're going to rush the passer every down, but this is how they have to play when they come out. And, and this is what makes it hard, Tony. When, when you're getting consistent pressure to the quarterback with just your four defensive linemen. That means you've got seven guys back in coverage. And, and that's that's where these big plays keep happening. And that's why Lovey Smith has got a smile on his face right now. That's why Chicago's so good. You know, there's seven in the box. They, they have one hole that's not covered and they stop the run. And, uh, you know, tribute to their linebackers and defensive line working together. Third down and 12, Lewis. That initially by Jennings. And then shoved by Gino Hayes. Mercedes Lewis games four, but not enough. Jaguars will punt it away once again. So the Bears defense dejected. They did not score on this Jacksonville possession. 
Only kidding. <laughs> they probably are. <laughs> Devin Hester's probably all upset. He wants another one. Well, that's, you know, that's the thing, you know, Goose, you, you, you have to punt, you know, you, you dodged a bullet by not turning it over to the defense for a touchdown, you got to turn around and kick it to Hester. Hey, that's what happens, you get competition between these guys, one guy scores, the other guy wants it, and, and it breeds a competition, and that's how teams get better and better and better, by competing within. Six and a half remaining in this one, Fox tonight, the scariest night of the year, comes early, it's animation, dominate, domination's hilarious Halloween, and what would the holiday be without a new Simpsons Treehouse of Horror? It all starts tonight, 7.30, 6.30 Central on Fox. It has been a second half of horrors for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bears have scored 31 points since halftime, including two more defensive touchdowns in a replay of Monday night. Lance Briggs and Charles Tillman reach the end zone for Chicago. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, for the first time in franchise history, will lose their first three home games in a season. Forte out to the 30, gain of three. I think they're heading in the right direction, though, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you could see it in the first half. They did not play well against the Cincinnati Bengals last week. And, you know, through the first half of the game, I thought Blaine Gabbert played really, really well. I thought his poise in the pocket was much improved from last week. He had confidence in his offensive line. His offensive line played well in the first half. Now, this game has gotten away from him here, and, and Chicago has shown that they are a good team. But Mike Malarkey's got, he's got his group heading in the right direction here in his first year. And he understands there's a lot of transition. There's going to be a lot of challenges, but... Second down and six. Forte, who is approaching the 100-yard mark. And he's got it with that carry. Five defensive touchdowns the last three games for Chicago. Marshall with 12 receptions, 144 yards. Bears have outscored the Jaguars here in the second half, 31 to nothing. And, and look at that third quarter where, where everything started. 133 yards to negative one. Only four plays run by the Jaguars in the third quarter. And one of them was a Chicago touchdown by the defense. Third down and three. Forte picks up a first down out to the 42 with under five minutes remaining. Bears with a 100-yard receiver in Marshall and a 100-yard rusher in Matt Forte. First time since Thomas Jones and Lucien Muhammad did it back in November of 06. Looks like Jake Cutler's going to come out of the game, guys. And it may not be the last time this season when you've got Brandon Marshall and you've got Matt Forte in your lineup and Jay Cutler is your quarterback. You've got the potential for 100-yard receiving days and 100-yard rushing days. This is an offense that's got a lot of talent. Now they've, they've got to start the games better. You know, it, it's 10-7 at halftime against Dallas until the defense ignites them right at the end of the first half there. It's 3-3 at halftime here. So Jason Campbell in for Cutler. Bears keep the clock moving. Campbell, 70 career starts with the Redskins and the Raiders in his eighth season out of Auburn. This is first action as a member of the Chicago Bears. Suffered a broken collarbone last year, started six games. He was knocked out with the injury, and then the Raiders traded for Carson Palmer. But, but I think that that was a great acquisition by the Chicago Bears. We know what happened to their season last year. They sat at 7-3 and three until Jay, or to Jay Cutler broke his thumb and their season just spiraled out of control they've got a very good capable backup quarterback this year that's a great point you make that seven and three start last year they spiraled down the stretch without Cutler and then without Forte but when, when the Bears were seven and three they were right up there with with San Francisco and some of the other top teams Green Bay in the NFC last year they finished eight and eight they went just one and five without Cutler so I think coming into this season they were under a lot of people's radars Absolutely. And, and all they did in the offseason was, was get Jason Campbell to solidify the backup quarterback, bring in Brandon Marshall, and then mash him with Alshon Jeffrey to create two matchup issues on the outside, bring in Michael Bush to take some snaps away from Matt Forte to make sure he's healthy down the stretch. They, they have really done a nice job with the roster, and, and their defense is just playing lights out right now. This is Armando Allen, his first carry today. Second year back out of Notre Dame. 
And we also talked about the fact that the Bears played on the road Monday night, traveled home, got home in the wee hours Tuesday morning, back on the road yesterday for the trip to Jacksonville. Since 1970, it's only the seventh time the Bears have played a road game Monday night, then a road game the following Sunday. Last time they won the Sunday game, 1991. It's they a challenge. Responded, they responded in the second half. You know, maybe it was a, a little bit of a problem there early, Daryl, but, I, you know, the second half, they, they looked fresher than they could they, and they ever did. Yeah, that, that was not a good sign right there. All John Jeffrey with a pretty good size wrap on that hand, so. See if, we, see if we can get you an update before we go off the air and find out what happened to his hand. Fortunately for Jeffrey, Bears will not play again for 15 days. They'll host the Lions on a Monday night. What a second half for Chicago. There's Lance Briggs, who has one of the two touchdowns scored by the Chicago defense here in the second half. Bears with five defensive touchdowns the last three games. Jay Cutler, two touchdown passes. Now in second place on the Bears' all-time list. Trailing only Sid Luckman, Cutler with 70 touchdown throws. He had been tied for second with Billy Wade. And Armando Allen breaks free. Allen takes it all the way for another Bears touchdown. I like the thought process by Armando Allen at the end of that run. He was thinking about maybe getting out of bounds or sliding short and it's having the clock run out. But it's so hard. I mean, your natural instinct is to get into the end zone. And who knows when he's going to get another opportunity. But I'm sitting here at the start of this drive wondering, you know, if Chicago is going to be able to run this clock out, come out and get that running game going, let that offensive line come off the ball. And here they just did a tremendous job up front blocking and get a long touchdown run. First NFL score for Armando Allen. Bears have scored 38 second half points. What a difference a few days makes. A big scuttle about Monday night when Jay Cutler walked away from Mike Tice, his offensive coordinator. All good this afternoon. And I think it will continue to, to go well for this offense. A lot of weapons out there. Got a lot of competitive guys on that team too, man. Everyone wants the best out of everybody. And I think that it shows sometimes. People might get the wrong read from it, but uh, they're competitive. You got to love it. Bears with 38 points here in the second half. Most points Chicago has scored in the second half of the game since 1941. They scored 49 points in the second half of the game in Philadelphia. So now the offense has the edge again over the last three weeks. <laughs> one three bears under two minutes remaining as we get ready and hope you are too for the biggest month of the year fox toberfest continues saturday fox college football utah and ucla and usc takes on washington followed by a fox nfl sunday doubleheader one week from today cowboys and ravens early america's game of the week giants at 49 is late and then next sunday night game one of the national league championship series it is all here on Fox. <laughs> Penalty markers on first down. Outside defense, number 75, five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Matt Tawina. Right at 45 on the clock. The Bears have scored on all four of their offensive possessions here in the second half. Field goal followed by three touchdowns. And then you add in the two defensive touchdowns. 
They've scored every time they've touched the ball since halftime. So the Bears will go to four and one. Minnesota leading Tennessee 30 to seven in the fourth quarter. So it will be Chicago and Minnesota tied atop the NFC North. They will not play each other until November 25th. Bears with a bye and then a Monday night game at home against Detroit. While the Jaguars will drop to one and four. Jacksonville with a bye as well. And then they must head out on the road for their next two games. At Oakland and at Green Bay, the ball is deflected. And Anthony Walters, number 37, thought he had a shot at it. A minute eight to go. Gino Hayes almost had their third defensive touchdown. And he does he does every he does everything right right there except make the catch breaks on the ball puts himself in the position. Third down and one more flags. Offside, defense number 98. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That's on Corey Wooten, who has two sacks today. You know, he had a big play in the first half. Jacksonville had put together a nice drive, was coming down the field, and he had the sack fumble once they got into scoring position. So when the game was still in the balance there in the first half, Corey Wooten had one of the bigger plays defensively for Chicago. Bears with 38 second half points. Shot Jennings. So with under a minute remaining, think back to halftime when this game was tied at three. Bears come out, hold on to the ball for over nine minutes to start the third quarter. Can't reach the end zone. Gold kicks a 31 yard field goal, but then on the next Jacksonville possession, Charles Tillman with the interception return for a touchdown and then the floodgates open as Gabbard is chased and then throws it away as he was under pressure from JT Thomas. There's Tillman, breaks with a touchdown as well. There's offense with three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. A very happy plane ride back to Chicago for Jay Cutler and the Bears. Gavin on third down and seven. Lewis walked out at the 37 yard line by. Gino Hayes. Great job by our entire crew today. Producer Barry Landis, Director Brian Lilly, Associate Directors Eric Mandia and Joe Williams, Broadcast Associate Paul Marmoreau, our Technical Producer Sid Drexler, Technical Director Chris Castro, Free Game Produced by Bill Richards, Directed by Bob Levy. Bears score 38 second half points, defeat the Jaguars 41 to 3. We will return to Jacksonville after these messages. The outside of GoDaddy is Marlena. Marlena. We went in thinking this would be a trap game. Well, it was a trap first half, but after intermission, it was all Bears as they end up routing the Jacksonville Jaguars in a game that has just gone final at Everbank Field. 41-3, 38 unanswered points in the second half for the Bears. And over the next 90 minutes, we will break things down here on Bears Post Game Live, presented by the Illinois Back Institute. And a very happy, good Sunday evening to everybody out there. Welcome to the show, everybody. The Bears improving to 4-1, and one, heading into their bye week. Without any further ado, let's introduce our panel, get a quick thought from each as we introduce them. And I don't know, since Hunter Hillenmeyer came aboard, the Bears have scored, is it five or six defensive touchdowns in three games? I'm 
I'm starting to lose count. A lot. The, the tale of two halves today really scared me there going into halftime. Took care of business in the second half. Great job. And our signal caller, Jim Miller, as always, uh, joins us as well. Yeah, well, what can you say? The Bears go into the bye week on fire offensively and defensively, thanks to Hunter Hillemeyer. And, <laughs> and Jiggets, uh, I have a feeling he's going to pop open a beverage here, but well, first uh, is all, there anything you have to first say? First of all, my friends. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> There's the big gulp. How's that taste, Jigs? Like victory. <laughs> the Jaguars got caught in a bear trap today, my Ooh, friend. Second my half. Goodness. How's that? Yeah, they took their uh, spots off, I guess. But uh, another tremendous defensive performance by the Bears. The offense decided to catch up a little bit with them as we went along. And as always, we invite you to get interactive with the show. Nicole Darren monitoring your questions and comments at CSNChicago.com in our Illinois Back Institute Interactive Suite. And Nicole, hopefully there's a lot of uh, happy viewers out there, a lot of happy Bear fans, and they're not getting a little uh, too picky with the way things went in the first half. Well, they can holler at me all they want, csnchicago.com or on Twitter using the hashtag Bears Talk. Now, I have to say that I thought during the first half of the game that we might get some nasty comments, people not too happy, unhappy Bears fans. But after that second half scoring explosion, it's been quite the contrary, guys. We'll be monitoring your comments throughout the show. I'll check back later. Some of the best ones I'll have on the show. The very best gets a $50 gift card to Paris Club. And take a look at some of these early tweets coming in. P Brazil 99 says, is there a slaughter rule in football? The Bears are killing it this afternoon. Should we play all our games at 3 p.m.? Maybe so. Darren Svensson says maybe Lovey needs to give his halftime speech in pregame next week. Yeah, that might be something. Well, he might be onto something. Eric M. Gustafson says, have the Bears thought about using Briggs and or Tillman as a wide receiver? Guys, I got to say, I'm just kicking myself every week for not grabbing the Chicago defense in my fantasy draft year. this year. What do you think? You are going to learn. Eventually, you'll, you'll <laughs> learn. Uh, you're relatively new here in town, but... Uh, I think uh, you'll, uh, you're getting a little more wise as the weeks go I, I, I tell on. You, Chris, I'm a little disappointed, though. Nicole, she didn't toast with us. Eh? Oh, she no. had the cap okay, on the Kool-Aid. Did, did she have her Kool-Aid? What's up with uh, this now? Here we go. Let's get her. She there we go. Pop. There it is. Oh, there oh, we go. And I need to go. Oh, there she goes. Time. <laughs> it's all good. All right, we'll check back. We'll check back in with you in a few minutes. Yeah, it's victory. Victory. All right. Time now for our opening kickoff. Let's get the guys uh, a little more in-depth comment on what they thought of the game. And as always, Jigs will lead us off. Well, you know, uh, while you look at the first half and you, you know, it looked like a, you know, a heavyweight match, everybody's kind of feeling each other out. You, as Herman Edwards once said, you play to win the game, and that's exactly what they did. They stayed with the things that were working for them offensively in terms of running the ball. And we talked about that the last couple of weeks, staying with that run game and how important that can be. And defensively, uh, you know, MJD uh, really wasn't a factor in the ball game. They had two nice runs. Other than that, forget about it. You're shutting down the best running back in the National Football League in terms of yards from scrimmage. Yeah, I credit the Bears. One, like I said, going into the bye week, uh, you know, with a lot of momentum offensively and defensively. Let's face it, they flat out wore Jacksonville out. I mean, that's in their home stadium. They're used to the heat, everything. They put their hard hat on and came to play. So credit to Bears. That was a big victory going into the bye. Yeah, I had the Bears on upset alert again. Especially Jacksonville really controlled the tempo there in the first half, won the time of possession, which especially in a hot game can be a big deal. The offense came out and took care of business in the second half, but still the story of this game, defense. <laughs> Two defensive touchdowns, you're going to win the football game. It's as simple as that. And it was uh, a familiar refrain from a couple of nights ago back on Monday night in Dallas. It was Pina Tillman and Lance Briggs who took their uh, interceptions, their turnovers to the house, and that's in fact the way it wound up today. What do you think was uh, said there at halftime? guys uh, when it's a 3-3 ball game everyone was talking about a trap game it was starting to come true you had to figure that those black uniforms that the Jacksonville Jaguars broke out was going to catch yeah. up to them. Well, I, I don't think there was anything that needed to be said at halftime. The Bears were averaging 6.2 per rush. I mean, they were doing everything they wanted to offensively. Just third down conversions weren't there offensively. And defensively, it's frustrating because everybody said, oh, they're not getting the Blaine Gabbard. They're not putting pressure on. Look at the quick game by Jacksonville. They knew going into the game, when you look at head coach Mike Malarkey, he was not going to throw Blaine Gabbard to the Wolves. And that's what he would have been doing if he would have challenged him yeah, through the ball down. We the were joking about their splits. The 
offensive oh, lineman geez. splits were about that far <laughs> apart. They just bunched up in there and tried to protect him, and he got the ball out quick. But you know what? The defense stayed with him. They give you a little bit up underneath, but they're not going to. They're going to try to stop anything deep from happening on them. And uh, they pretty much did that today, and that's the reason why they came away with the victory. And then you saw the pressure start that came in the second half when they realized we can't run the ball, so we got to try to throw it now. Then you have to take deeper drops and hold that ball a little bit longer. Yeah, and it was jailbreak time once yeah. the Bears started getting him. And Hunter, I think uh, one thing, I know you can't necessarily speak for the offensive side of the ball, but as the offense was struggling, once Peanut had that interception to break the game open, it seemed like a whole lot of pressure. It was like the old radiator that's overheating when you loosen the cap a little bit. That was a huge play. I actually think the game-changing play was Corey Wooten's forced fumble. Really big momentum change. Got the ball back when maybe we were in a position where we were actually about to go down a little bit there at the start of the second half. This is what good football teams do. They didn't play their best football in the first half, but they kept the game close. They stayed in the game. 3-3 three to three going in at halftime, you're, you're getting a little sweat under the collar for your coach. They come out. Think about this, though, Hunter. You know, you look at their drives. I mean, they, they start games off in t tough territory offensively. Mm -hmm. It seems like every week it's, you know, yeah. on the six-yard line. That's where they're starting. <laughs> and one of the things that, you know, if you look at what really holds the game for you is when you can go in some nice drives, 10 play, 11 play, 13 play drives, get it out from underneath your goal post. That's the thing that the offense was doing in the first half maybe yeah. that the, in the second half started to yeah, pay they off. They were seeming like they were they were sustaining a couple of drives, getting the ball from deep in their own territory right. into Jacksonville territory. It's important to do that. Not quite yeah. able to finish things off. Well, if you look at the, the coverage, and I'm going to tell you right now, Derek Cox, uh, the cornerback for Jacksonville, mm -hmm. he's a good football player now. If there's one matchup they should have been attacking, it probably was Rasheen Mathis on the other side but credit Brandon Marshall they got it but the press coverage by Jacksonville they weren't on the same page on the outside you saw fade stops not being hit to Marshall not being hit to Jeffrey not being hit to, to Devin Hester all of a sudden third quarter turn the page that big long 17 play drive the Bears had figured them out and there was nothing Jacksonville could do to stop Chicago I, I thought one of the big things we saw though is a lot of times when you see Jay throw an interception on the first no. play first mm -hmm. series of the game you're thinking oh no you know where is this gonna go today he threw one bad ball there a little bit of a miscommunication I think Brandon Marshall mm -hmm. kind of pulled off in the slant a little bit yep. recovered and played a great football game mm -hmm. the rest of the way and uh, we're waiting to hear from Lovey Smith we will bring you his press conference live also hear from Jay Cutler anyone else they bring to the podium plus our Kip Lewis is in Jacksonville at Everbank Field outside the Bears locker room he'll have some live interviews and we'll bring you a reaction from inside the locker room as well Lovey should be up at the podium at any, uh, any few minutes from now but uh, Hunter since he's joined us here we mentioned the defensive success and when these guys are picking off uh, passes and taking him to the house Hunter's getting up <laughs> and he's cheering in our green room, uh, walking toward that TV screen like he wants to uh, get involved there. You're, you're missing it out there when it's that much fun. Hey, uh, offensive touchdowns, no big deal. But when the defensive <laughs> guys get one, you're going to see me standing up off my, the couch. My only thing is, you know, like, I look at Lance and that little celebration. Yeah. What is that all about, man? Tell us a little hey, bit about he's, the... he's been doing it since his rookie year. I don't know where it comes from, but if, if it ain't broke, Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, a, on a serious note, though, here Brian Urlacher made a, a comment earlier this week about he thinks this is the best defense that he's been a part of. You took a little bit of offense to that because you like that 2005 <laughs> defense of Chicago. Maybe touch on that a little I, bit. I just think that there's a lot of time left in the football season right now. They're, yeah. they're only five games in. They're playing tremendously. Obviously four defensive touchdowns in the last two weeks, but you go back to those 2005-2006 seasons, at this point in the year, the defense was actually on pace to set the record in terms of yards allowed yeah. and in terms of points allowed. And, and so just in terms of playing into whether they can do it in the long haul, I think that that's where we'll figure out where well, this defense lines up. Let me up try this on you. Years it, could it be one, the reason why Brian is so excited? Is because then you know he was the uh, main cog in all of that. This time around, he's got a bunch of pups running around mm -hmm. making plays, and he could just, as he said, he's the leading high fiver and, on the team this and time. And they've needed those guys to step up yeah. as Brian has recuperated as well. By the way, it's the first time in franchise history there have been interception returns for touchdowns in three consecutive games, not to be right. the killjoy or the guy to sober things up. Let's keep in mind also that the, a lot, first, the first five <laughs> opponents, though, have all been ranked uh, 20th in right. offense or lower. Well, I think if you just take his, his comments at face value when you look at Brian Erlacher, Look at the depth. 
I mean, why could Corey Wooten go in there and make what you think is a turning point in the game, that sack fumble or force fumble on the hit on, on Blaine Gabbert because of the depth? You've got fresh legs. You've got a rotation up front defensively. That's going to benefit the defense. And uh, Corey Wooten, credit him, but uh, i got to believe Julius Peppers and the other guys are like, oh, yeah, fresh legs. Come on in. Keep them rolling in here <laughs> in this heat, and it paid off for Chicago. I think that's the depth or lack of what's talking yeah, about. I think uh, Henry Melton helped him out on, yeah. uh, on one, one play, too. So you look at Henry. Here, Henry's another one of those young guys that's been making a difference all along. So, uh, you know, I'm sure when Brian sits back then, he looks around and sees, you know, 24-year-olds running around and making plays. He says, hey, you know, this is not bad. Okay, when you, when you need me, give me a call, I, and I'll I wanna, make the big I play. I want to give the stat guys another homework assignment. When was the last time that you had two defensive players have touchdowns on interceptions two games. weeks in a row? Wow. I, I'd like I to see the answer to that one. We'll I, have I, that I would say it's probably never over. happened before. No, we'll have that before the show is over, I think, <laughs> if, it, if indeed it has ever happened. Still waiting uh, here from Maris head coach Lovey Smith. Another little defensive note here. 1950 was the last time the defense had scored touchdowns in three consecutive games and we mentioned uh, the fact that uh, it's now three straight in which they have uh, returned interceptions. A little props to the offense though on uh, you know it's been since 2006 that the Bears have had a 100 yard rusher as well as a uh, 100 yard receiver in Brandon Marshall and Matt Forte. So even though it took a little while for the offense to get going I'm, I'm sure the offense is yeah. thankful for the D. They're doing what they're, so there would be even more pressure on the offense without the defense doing what it's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's giving the offense time to figure out what they're being presented uh, defensively. You know, Hunter mentions the early turnover. Those can't happen. I think everybody knows that. It kills the, the drives. But in terms of the running game, in terms of things that they're asking guys to do offensively, I, I love what Chicago is doing right now. I think they're when this is all said and done, they're going to be one of the top offenses in the NFL. Let's head out to Jacksonville. Lovey Smith approaching the podium following his team's 41 to 3 victory. You know, after Monday night game going on the road, you know, normally that team has trouble. And, and we did early on. The heat, you know, I would like to think it didn't, you know, didn't bother us an awful lot, but uh, we weren't as sharp as we needed to be. But thank God you played two halves. Second half, the guys really came out that first drive by offense. Uh, to, I think we got a field goal, but, you know, the amount of time we kept off of the clock. And then from there, we got things rolling. Defense you know, start doing what they normally do. I'm talking about taking the ball away. How about Charles Tillman and uh, Lance Briggs, two weeks in a row? I don't think that's probably ever happened, but, uh, uh, you know, great job by the D. And then getting good pressure. Corey Wooden, I can talk about a lot of guys. Matt Forte, another week uh, being able to get, you know, for him, I think it's been a while since he went over 100 yards, but I uh, thought the line did a great job. I'm going to talk about a lot of people that played well in the second half. Uh, and for a player like Brandon Marshall to come back down to Florida, uh, I keep saying, you know, talking about him being a scholarship player, uh, you know, they were doing an awful lot to take him out of the game, but uh, we kept getting him the ball. Uh, Jay, you know, just across the board, uh, defensive line, linebackers, Brian Erlecker getting a good hit there at the end. Uh, the type of win we needed going into the bye week. Goal, of course, to get to 4-1, and one, whatever that took. Injury-wise, we didn't have a lot of injuries, but Alshon Jeffrey has a hand injury. Don't know the extent of the injury right now, but he couldn't finish the game, so we'll continue to monitor it. Take your question. What did you say at halftime, Lovey? What was the message? Uh, you know, it's the same message always. We talked. I mean, you saw the first half, so uh, we were just letting everyone know exactly how we played, but didn't need to say an awful lot. I mean, we played. We didn't play well. It wasn't Chicago Bear football, and guys were anxious to get some things corrected and get back out there to the second half. Coach, did you, second game in six days, both on the road and with this heat. Did you ever have any concerns uh, early in the third quarter that you know this this is going to be a struggle all the way to the? No, end? I had concerns in the first half. Uh, we didn't. We weren't playing as fast as we normally do. Uh, a little sluggish. So it was a concern, but uh, you know, we've seen how these guys have played. We've been around them a long time. They normally respond. Uh, we adjust it fairly quick. Is Tillman one of the best uh, defensive backs that you ever coached in his entire career? You know, of course I'm biased, and rightfully so. The guy just does uh, everything you want a cornerback to do. He's got great size, plays hard, he's got good hands, he'll tackle. He's just got an uncanny knack for taking the football away. So, uh, again, we're, we're biased, but uh, we like having him on our football team. 
fourth down on that long drive to start the second half? Were you trying to get something going, provide some sort of spark? Felt like we had to. We talked about how disappointed we were in the first half. We couldn't come out there and punt the ball away right away. So to me, that's an easy call to make, to put it on our team. They wanted, everyone wanted. It's not like I was the only guy that, that wanted to go for it on fourth down, but uh, that really gave us some momentum. Coach, where do you see Gabbard struggling the most from your standpoint? Uh, Gabbard's going to be a good, he'll be a good football player in the league, but he's still young. I mean, as simple as that. Uh, it, it takes a while. We have a good defense. I thought he played well, and he's been playing well. He's protected the football. I know the day we, we had a couple of interceptions, but he's done a good job protecting the ball, and he's going to have a good career in this league. Third straight game that your defense comes up with at least one pick six. What does that say about the level that they're playing at right now? I, think they, I know they know how important it is to take the ball away, and uh, there's an emphasis on it. And after a while, you see one guy doing it, you want to join in on that action. Uh, but again, the players know how important it is. It's, it's discouraging to the offense, you know. Uh, when you get it in. We normally win, too, when we score one time. And, man, I, it's probably safe to say we haven't lost when we score a couple times on the defensive side. What about the fans that were here today? Another great turnout. Uh, I, I should have started again. I made a mistake last week of not talking about them right away. Out Just great. At the hotel, it was just unbelievable how many fans we had there. We saw them, you know, before the game. We heard them throughout. At less you know, let's go Bears. I mean, I'm still hearing it. And so they had a big say in us fighting through some tough times early on. Coach, when you talk about the difference between the first and the second half, was it a, like a physical thing or was it schematic, a little of both? I, I, we didn't play well. And I don't know the reason why. We had an excellent practice. I mean, we, we talked about it, but sometimes that's how it happened. But you, you can't, they don't, you know, they don't crown a winner after the first half. It's simple as that. You have to play that second half. And I, I just like where the guys had to fight, where we had to fight back and you know, finish up strong in that second half. But how would you assess Jay's play today? Oh, I thought he played well, um, like he's been playing. Jay's put two good weeks uh, together, back to back, like our offense has. You know, we say Jay, I mean, it's, it's the group. Offensive line giving him time, and you know, Jay's as good as anyone out there. Simple as that. Well, you, you stress turnovers and, and not only getting the takeaways, but doing something with the ball once you get it. Why in the last three weeks has it been so, so, so successful? I don't know. I just know that we harp, we talk about it constantly. The coaches do a great job, an excellent job of, uh, you know, again, just letting the players know how important that is. But we have veteran players that have been around here, they've seen how what takeaways do. Uh, so it's just a part of the DNA of our defense. It's not a good football game unless we take the ball away. Because we saw the schedule, three three road games in four weeks, two and six days on the road. Before, did you kind of target that as, well, if we could just survive that, get through it, but you're through it and you're tied for first place. Is that as good as you could have hoped? We hadn't talked much about surviving, though. I mean, it was setting the bar each week and then trying to improve a little bit on the last week's effort. It's kind of as simple as that. But once you get here, I mean, players, every player in the NFL looks forward to that bye week. Nobody wants to go into that bye week on a loss. So the guys, again, practices have been great, and they know where we are. We're a good football team. We have a lot, though, of, uh, of things to correct still, and we will. Thanks. We're going to bring in Brandon Marshall again. Yes. All right, Lovey Smith speaking after the huge win over Jacksonville, the most dominant road win since they beat the Dallas Cowboys. 44 0 back in 1985. Jigs, here's a look at some of the final statistics of the game, ones that really jump out. Obviously, the total yards, it's almost a, uh, uh, a uh, well, 5 2. We'll, we'll round it off there in terms of uh, the advantage there. But then the rushing yards, 214, that comes out. Dan to a six and a half yard a pop it's average, just as you request. Just as, just lovely. I'm telling you, and you know, and again, that's reflected in the time of possession. But you, you know, one of the things that I was wondering about was, you know, what do coaches actually say and what do they do at halftime? A lot of people ask about halftime adjustments, mm -hmm. and obviously there were some adjustments made. Maybe there were attitude adjustments, but I was wondering, Hunter, since you're the last guy to play on this team, uh, what does the staff do? What does Lovey typically do? Because he comes under a lot of criticism for, at times because people look at him and say, well, his demeanor on the sideline, you know, he's not very demonstrative and that kind of thing. I, I don't think Lovey's the type of coach that tries to scare people into thinking the opponent is better than they are. He's, he's honest with guys that this is a team that was capable of beating us, 
But I, I think what he probably said at halftime was, we're not playing like we're capable of. No screaming, no shouting. We're a better football team than this. Let's go out there in the second half and show it. And they did. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take our first break here on Bears Post Game Live after the 41-3 win in Jacksonville. We're brought to you, as always, by the Illinois Back Institute. Hunter, Jim, Dan, and I will return along with Nikal, but we want you to get interactive with us. Give us your time for our UPS store, taking care of business, player of the game, and we're going to give it to Peanut Tillman, who worked his magic once again. A pass intended in the third quarter for Justin Blackman. He goes up, intercepts it, and takes it the other way for the touchdown. This one, a 36-yard return for Peanut. Game was really hanging in the balance at that point, 6-3. to three. He's able to make that pick off, and from there, it got a whole lot easier as the Bears are able to open things up from there. The offense got clicking as well, and here's a look at the most defensive touchdowns in Bears franchise history, and uh, Peanut Tillman now holds the lead. Let's go back to Jacksonville. Jay Cutler meeting with the media at Everbank Field. Uh, you know, defense did a great job. We had a good drive there, that, that, that first drive. Uh, didn't get in the end zone, but got a little bit of momentum going, and the offensive line played great all day for me. When's the last time you've been a part of a half like that? Uh, been a while. Um, you know, we uh, put up a lot of points. Defense put up some points again. Uh, we're never really at it with those guys on defense. They play such good football. They, they're holding the... Uh, the opposite team to, to a few yards, a lot of punts, are giving us a lot of opportunities to score. How big was Peanut's touchdown to the momentum change? <clears throat> big, it's big, it's big. Um, we had a good drive. We would like to have got in the end zone there, set up for three, and then uh, for Peanut to turn around and make another impactful play, you know, back to back weeks. It, it speaks a lot the way this defense is playing. Um, the, the whole group, they're, they're playing extremely well. Was this a typical day for Brandon Marshall or better than that? Uh, this is pretty typical. Um, you know, he's when he gets matched up one on one, he's gonna make some plays, and uh, whenever we get up like that, they're gonna start loading the box, and he's gonna get some opportunities. I feel like you're really feeling the hot hand there with him because you know he was making those big plays in the second half. Jim, this is this is this is horrible. <laughs> um, you know, he, he's he's such a heck of a player. He, he plays well. Uh, the first half we had some opportunities, just didn't make the play, so we they didn't do anything we, we didn't expect. Uh, they were right in the places we, we thought they were going to be, just weren't making the plays that we needed to make. And second half we uh, we made those plays. You talked about the momentum now, the four and one, and some big wins on the road, and, and the direction offense today. Yeah, it's always good to go in a bye week on a win. Um, you never want to take that those ten days off or whatever you are a, a loss. So to go into it as a win uh, is big for this team. We get a chance to rest and get to, get a chance to heal up. And for this final push, offensively, we're doing some good things. Uh, Marshall said definitely need to improve and, and keep working, but we're heading in the right direction. Brandon Marshall said they played some two man today. Uh, were you more successful against that than in the Green Bay game? Well, I think we were. <laughs> any, any particular reason? <laughs> what, you know, what did you learn from from that game? Is that why, or we just got lucky? It, Jay, it seems like uh, sometimes you have an interception early in the game. Is that just to settle down? Is that? Yeah, I want to give them a, a chance to. No, it's uh, no, it's not to settle down. It's uh, it's uh, unfortunate. Uh, they, they stepped right in front of the guy, made a good play. Um, as simple as that. It's gonna happen. Jay, it's been forever since the Bears wide receivers had a hundred yard game in consecutive weeks. Is that almost kind of what it's expected from Brandon and how explosive he can be? And yeah, that's why we brought, brought him here. I mean, to, to be that guy, to be that number one receiver. Whenever he uh, gets one on one, we, we expect him to win 100% of the time, uh, hands down. Uh, if he comes to the sideline and says, I just didn't win, I say, why not? So uh, he's that guy, and uh, he's living up to it. See anything that uh, Blaine Gabbard is doing? Second year quarterback, obviously, you've been there. Um, see anything in particular? You know, he's hanging in there. He, he was limiting his turnovers coming into this game. This, game, this defense is tough. I mean, especially when you're up 20, 30 points, you, you make them one-dimensional. They're going to have to pass the ball. And at that point, you're feeding right into our hands. So uh, I thought he managed the game well those first three quarters. It just, just kind of got out of hand. And at that point, it's it, it's, it's it's uphill battle, it really is. James, it make it easier for you guys, or do you – Relax a little, maybe just knowing how good your defense is with takeaways. You know, I, I, the thing is, on the sideline, we can't. We there's no reason to panic for us on offensively. If we're three to three, if we're seven to ten, if we're we're, we're close, we're in it. Uh, the defense is going to give us more opportunities. So we just have to keep grinding away and and uh, keep talking football and figuring out what plays we like and what plays we don't. Uh, because that defense is, is going to uh, create turnovers. They're going to get up three outs. We're going to get more opportunities. So. That first half, there was no panic on our side. I mean, we knew uh, we knew we have a great defense behind us, helping us out. It's just a matter of us going out there and executing the plays and making the plays we can make. Anything else? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, Jay Cutler, speaking after the 41-3 victory over Jacksonville, here's a look at the quarterback comparison. Gabbert did get on a little bit of a roll during one drive in the first half in which they kept converting third and long situations, but when all is said and done, uh, Cutler's dominating uh, performance in comparison head-to-head -to, -head to Gabbert as he piles up nearly 300 yards passing, a 2-1 to -one touchdown to interception ratio, and the quarterback rating at 88.8, his first career win against Jacksonville after two losses in the Bears. Are now nine and one in Jay's last ten starts, 23 and nine in the last 32 games that he has started. Time now to go 15 on six, where the former quarterback evaluates the current one. Jim, take it away. Well, I think for for Jay Cutler, he overcomes the early interception. Wasn't a bad read by Jay Cutler, maybe just bad ball placement, but he moves on in the game, you know. And then the second half, we mentioned how well they were running the football. That continues on that long 17 play drive. And I think if you saw and watched the game, you could see Jay Cutler even in third down situations. Situations. He was audibly into run plays, you know, so that the Bears could pick up first down. So that's putting your team in the best position to win. I thought he was outstanding, scrambling when he needed to. When they mentioned in that press conference, two man, that's how you got a two man defense, scrambling and running the football. So another great back to back performance by Jay Cutler to get the victory. Let's <laughs> let's now hear from his uh, favorite target, Brandon Marshall, became the first Bears since 1999 to have back to back 100 yard receiving games. Let's hear what he had to say after this win working out there today you know what um the sun going down <laughs> it was a hot one man uh you know we started off slow in all three phases but i tell you what we came in the locker room we kept our cool kept our composure and uh we just started executing our game plan have you considered how you could kind of quickly climb into the franchise's record books with games like this back to back no i haven't thought about it you know i mean it's always the honor to, to have that opportunity, that that platform to um, have that chance. But uh, you know, it's all about winning. You know, so we continue to win. You know, we're all going to be special. We're all going to go down in uh, some record books. Three points at half. What were you guys saying when you came in here to talk about the second half? Bad half, very bad half. Um, not beer football, and um, you know, we wanted to come out and. You know, play 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 a lot better, play up to our potential, and I, I think we did that. If you guys miss Alshon for a while, do you think you've got the players where you won't yeah. miss much of a beat? Because he's he's been a, he's been good through five games. Yeah, he has. He 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 really is a big part of our offense. You know, tried to get him going a little bit this uh, this week. You know, he had a big score for us, um, got us going in the second half. Uh, but we're so deep in a wide receiver room. It doesn't matter if it's Alshon or me uh, or Devin. You know, we got a guy that can step up and play. So, you know, we'll get Earl back after this bye. You know, Dane, you know, the things he's able to do in the slot. Eric Weems, we haven't even used him yet. So he's still parked in the garage. And, uh, of course, Devin Hester, you see uh, the plays he's able to make last week and today. So um, we have a, a special group of guys. Maybe with all the depth, it did feel good for you to kind of carry the weight there, especially in, I think in the third quarter you got targeted a lot and made a lot of big catches. <laughs> you know what? Um, I mean, they, they, brought, they brought me here to, you know, to be a number one receiver, but in our offense, you know, we have the ability to game plan around different guys. You know, it could be Matt's day. You see Bush, what he's able to do, uh, Alshon. And so, you know, they brought me here to make big plays, but at the same time, when teams want to take me out, uh, we have the guys that can step up. You felt good about this Florida heat today. You're used to it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I've lived here almost all my life, and I'm still not used to it. Um, no, I mean, you know, I guess I got, I got bear blood in me now. What can you What can you do to be better after these five games where you put up you know, huge numbers? Like oh, there's a lot. As a wide receiver. There's a lot. Uh, hats off to uh, 21 Cox. Uh, I played against him last year in the preseason. He really got better. You know, he honestly beat me in the first half. Uh, the first half, he won that and really humbled me. Um, and I was on the sideline talking to myself like, man, these guys get paid too, you know, just to try to talk myself into, uh, you know, me not winning. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I need to improve on, be more consistent. You know, there's a couple uh, times where I was out of position on a few routes, a few plays. So I got to be more consistent in my play. Brandon, you made, some, you made some tough catches today. Were you defended differently than like you were against Green Bay? You know, they did a great job of uh, changing up their defense. They went a little two, a little two, man. They played a little one when Max uh, got going. So, um, you know, we see different coverages every week. 
Well, why were you so effective, better, more effective against two men in this game than against the Packers? They didn't do it much. They only gave it to us a few plays, and uh, uh, Jay was able to get us in the right position, calling some run plays, even scrambling a little bit. So, you know, hey, we're, we're going to get better every week. With Did Brandon, ball, were you in that, was that a man to man when you had that stop and go for the touchdown? Just one-on-one -on -one there? Uh, yeah, it was man-to-man, -man and uh, Jay, you know, got us into the right play. You know, he loaded up the box, and, you know, he threw it up, and I, and I made the play. What did you do with the ball? You hand it to a yeah, that was my father. I gave it to my dad, so that was big. Oh. <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks. Thank you. you guys want to fix it. Time now for our champion roofing player of the game, and we're going to give that to Brandon Marshall, as we mentioned. And as you saw on the graphic, first bear since Marcus Robinson when Cade McNown was chucking it to him back in 1999. Think about to it. To have back-to-back 100-yard -back games. And Brandon Marshall, I want to ask uh, each of you on this a little bit. Jay threw it 39 times. 17 of them went to Brandon Marshall. Uh, is that still a little bit too much? Did you ever think it was too much? Or as long as it's working, Jiggs, do you keep, do you no, keep you, doing you that? Threw him 17 out of me, caught 12 of them. That's a pretty good average for me. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. But my question is, like, I have a greater question for you, my friend. First of all, Jay Cutler and, of course, Brandon Marshall both come out in very nice suits. Gentlemen, what color were the suits? <laughs> I think that they might have coordinated. They obviously mm -hmm. have a good rapport going on. Right. I think I would call Jay's washed sandstone. Sandstone. Yeah. Washed yeah. sandstone. Light gray wow. window pane. Light gray window. <laughs> we're going with it. And I'm going to so. go with linen, okay? And the tie with a blush, just a blush of lilac on it. Really, I thought it was quality stuff. Are, and of course, are, Brandon comes out in the pink We tie. are breaking it down here, uh, folks. Hey, Next you, thing you know, we're going to have hey. a wardrobe, a wardrobe <laughs> segment who made sponsored. The, who made the suits? Uh, that question next one. Yes, I think. And that's maybe a sponsor, too. Let's head uh, back to our <laughs> Illinois Back Institute Interactive Suite. See what's up in Twinterville. And as always, Nicole Darren handles that for us. Nicole? You know, I think you guys have a second calling out of this style channel right now, Maybe jigs, you guys. Yeah. Voice your opinion on CSNChicago.com or on Twitter using the hashtag Bears Talk. Bears fans stoked about what they saw in Jacksonville today, all forgiven for that slow first half, too. Take a look at some of these comments from our interactive chat. Bears fans seeming rather euphoric right now. Robbie Zolin says, right now our D is scoring as much as our offense. I'm loving this team right now. Indiana fan says, way to get things started, Tillman. Next time my car won't start, I'll just call Peanut. Hey, how about that? <laughs> Berto That's wants to know, PGL, hey, what's the defensive record for touchdowns? I think he's talking about in a season, I want to assume by a team. I know about 10 years ago, the Bucks had nine touchdowns, but what are you guys thinking? Mm, I'm not so sure about that one. I, you'd have to probably look it's, back at the 85 Bears team as, you know, right. one of those candidates. You know what it's tricky, like? and I did some digging, and I couldn't find the exact numbers, but I, I did see that the Buccaneers had nine touchdowns, the Vikings had eight. And well, Was that the year that they won? Yeah, it was 2002. The year that they won. Yeah, Derek Brooks, Rondé Barber, you know. Well, you got more answers than we do, but we will have that answer for you uh, before we wrap up here on Post Game Live, and we have much more to come. Kip Lewis is going to be outside the Bears locker room. We'll have some interviews with him as well, and as we head to... Poll question, here it is. How many wins will the Bears finish with as they head into the bye week? After five games, will it be A, 8 or less, B, 9 to 10, C, 11 to 12, or D, 13 or more? That's a lot of Bears e aid 15. drinking, my friend. <laughs> Again, log on to CSNChicago.com. We'll have your results as Bears Post Game Live winds down. What do you see? Is it a tree? Or is it a shelter? Is it a time capsule telling the story of the last century or a way to combat climate change in this one? Looking at things from every angle. It happens every day at DePaul University by bringing together students with diverse perspectives and professors who challenge conventional thinking. A wider point of view emerges. DePaul University, a greater perspective. Are you Medicare eligible and concerned about protecting yourself from the costs that Medicare doesn't cover? If so, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois is your right choice. Call 1-877-613-1131 now for your free decision guide. It will answer all your questions and give you the information you need to make the right decision. You'll learn about Blue Medicare Advantage HMO, the plan that gives you premium coverage with no monthly premium. That's right, no additional monthly premium. 
Primary care visits are just $7. And you'll even receive prescription drug coverage. Why wait? It's easy to enroll in Blue Medicare Advantage. Every stage of life brings its challenges. Choosing the right health care coverage shouldn't be one of them. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Call 1-877-613-1131 now if you're Medicare eligible and want to choose Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. We'll rush you this free information packed decision guide. That's 1-877-613-1131. Call now. It's kind of hard to make decisions by yourself all of a sudden when you've been making them with somebody else for 35 years. And I guess there's something in me that has always been strong. I've always gotten through some pretty rough stuff without falling to pieces. Bears post game live with this Sportsnet Central update presented by AT&T UVerse. And hello again, everyone. As the Bears come away, 41-3 to was that way. Yeah, I, I thought the Bears dominated. I mean, even though some things, you know, didn't work out in the first half in, certain, in terms of converting third down conversions, Bears going to the bye week, get, having to feel, you know, on an ultimate high. I mean, they dominated pretty much every fashion in the second half of this ball game. Let's go to the highlights, and it was the uh, weight loss program game down here. They were sweating it up as a quarterback. Did you like the uh, the uh, slippery football or the frozen football? <laughs> it's always uh, more difficult to, to throw and get the snap, obviously, when it, when it's uh, bounced around on the ground. Throws the ball a little bit behind Brandon Marshall right there. Want to back hip him on that. But, hey, credit Jay Cutler. He overcomes it. Each team with a field goal in the first quarter. We move to the second. Just two minutes left in the half. Blaine Gabbert back to pass. They were driving. Big play by Corey Wooten. Corey Wooten, big play. Fresh legs in the game. And think about this. Jacksonville uh, gave up six sacks a week ago. And so I credit Corey Wooten because he was a fresh player getting in that, that heat and getting it done. Now to the final minute. Bears trying to score before the half. Cutler complete to Devin Hester. He had a couple of nice grabs today. That's one of them. But later on third and ten, Cutler's pass way too high here for Dane Sons and Bacher. And uh, the Bears would come up empty on that drive. Jay, not very happy. Yeah, I don't think that play was going to Dane. I thought he was going to Brandon Marshall on the comeback route on the outside. And that's what they're talking about right there. So it was just 3-3 going to the third quarter on a fourth and one. Cutler finding Brandon Marshall. He had himself a huge day all game long. Beautiful play right there. Big like to see him set his feet a little bit more. Takes the big hit by Mincy. Gets a flag on the play as well. Roughing the pass to tax 15 on. Then a pair of costly uh, false start penalties there on Gabe Karimi on the right side. Really shoots a beautiful drive to open the third quarter. 17 plays and unfortunately Gabe Karimi can't hold his water. But it was defense and Peanut to the rescue there. A second time in as many weeks he's able to pick one off and and take one to the house. He just has a knack for doing it. We have a young receiver like Justin Blackman. He'll pick on him. Come on, Chris. That was a horrible throw. He could have fair <laughs> caught that one at the end of the day. I'm Thank you, Blaine Gabbert. <laughs> well, Great play by Peanut. Yeah, that's his uh, seventh interception return touchdown of his career. And boy, this looks awfully familiar because just six days ago, he did the same thing to Tony Romo. Uh, and like everybody says in that locker room, special, special football player. Yep, first time since 1950. Bears defense has scored in three straight games. And then... Check him out, Michael Bush. He's not just a bulldozer. He's got some moves here. Who says the big man don't have some wiggle on him? Either that or he's got to go like Ronaldo and Nehemiah in the high hurdles, one or the other. Fourth quarter then, the Bears really start to turn it on, and this is where they break it open, 20-3, and the rookie, Alshon Jeffrey. That's big for Alshon Jeffrey. One-on-one -on -one coverage, you got to beat the defensive back, and those are good corners down in Jacksonville. That's that's big for Alshon Jeffrey there. He did injure a hand or a finger on the play, did not return. Not really 
clear in looking at the replays uh, where it happened, perhaps the dislocation, but we're just guessing right now, and he would not return. Then some more big play action. He finds his favorite target. Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one, there was a run play called the audibles. They take the one-on-one, the -on -one, throws the fade route over the top. Huge way to end the game uh, there for Brandon Marshall. And not only was the passing game, but Matt Forte hit the century mark as well. I'll tell you what, Jackson was giving up 150 yards coming into the game, and the Bears took advantage of it. And then just for put some a little icing on the cake, look what I found. Another deflection into Lance Briggs' arms, and he takes it 36 yards to the house. That opens up a 34-3 lead. This defense is really putting the hammer down and scoring points as well. And, oh, yeah, this looks familiar, too, just six days ago, Jim. They smother you. I mean, it is just so suffocating on an offense what this defense does to you when they go into a game having the lead. And they do. They make it very difficult on offense. And look at that. Jay Cutler and Mike Tice able to uh, smile and fist bump afterwards. Armando Allen added a 46-yard touchdown run in the late going to make the final 41-3. to Over 500 yards of total offense for the Bears. And there you see the monster game by Brandon Marshall. 12 receptions, 144 yards. And, oh yeah, the two defensive touchdowns as well. So some final thoughts here heading into the bye week. The Bears taking it with a 4-1 record. They get a little breather before the Monday nighter against the Detroit Lions. And even though it took the train a while to get going down in Jacksonville, they were able to put some things together and come out of there with a victory everyone expected. Yeah, I, I think, it, one, it's just a tremendous victory going in your bye week. They are firing on all cylinders right now. There is a lot for the Chicago Bears to feel pretty good about themselves. They won't get big-headed, and it's nice to see great sideline demeanor by Jay Cutler. That was wonderful all, in this ballgame. All's happy, and uh, the Bears, 41-3 to winners over the Jacksonville Jaguars. On the way, reaction from Charles Tillman, Matt Forte, and others as Bears Post Game Live rolls on. Bears Post Game Live is brought to you in part by BMO Harris Bank. See how BMO Harris Commercial Bank can help you at bmoharris.com slash commercial bank. I got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow. Got the string around my finger What a world Man, this is a lie Hey now I'm so in love You can see it We can help make it happen BMO Harris Commercial Bank Trembling hands. I was losing my balance. They diagnosed me with Parkinson's. Parkinson's. I couldn't believe it. My doctor referred me to North Shore Neurological Institute. My aunt said North Shore's done groundbreaking research. They have world-renowned Parkinson's specialists. Backed by an expert team. They customized my treatment. It was like a roadmap of where I was going and how they were going to help me. And it's really made a difference. I can see my future. It's not the end. At North Shore University Health System, excellence is leading the way in Parkinson's treatment. Stop by Mr. Submarine and satisfy your appetite with one of our delicious sub sandwiches. Mr. Submarine is satisfyingly tasty, great value. Mr. Submarine. Bears fans, Yokohama and Discount Tire want you in the game with this great tire deal. Here's your play. Now through October 31st, go to your participating Discount Tire store, get a set of four Yokohama tires, and score an official Bears replica jersey worth $100. Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. Hey, I'm Dr. Jeff. I treat world champions, and I can fix that. And I'm Kevin Butler. Our 85 championship team sacrificed a lot to win it all. Some of those sacrifices led to lasting pain. Fortunately, the Illinois Back Institute has a winning strategy. Dr. Jeff and his staff, they're on the cutting edge. First time I'd walked a mile in a decade, pain-free. Call the Illinois Back Institute today at 877-588-6129 or go to IllinoisBackPain.com. Bears Post Game Live is presented by the Illinois Back Institute, saving people from surgery. Welcome back to Bears Post Game Live, presented by Illinois Back Institute. Here's Chris, Hunter, Jim, and Dan. Five Bears defensive touchdowns in the last three weeks, and there you see the damage done by the D, and it is lots of it, as they have really been able to uh, put the hammer down on the opposition there. 
two in the last six days, and each of them by Peanut Tillman and Lance Briggs on Monday night in Dallas, and then this afternoon against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's hear what Peanut had to say afterwards as uh, he took one to the house once again today. The blocking. Defense did a great job blocking of creating a path for me to get in the end zone. You come to work every day before game day and work out with Lance, Br Lance Briggs. You guys do a little tag team workout before each and every game. Could you ever have imagined you'd have... I wouldn't say tag team. That doesn't sound too cool. You know what I mean. <laughs> Partners in crime, whatever you want to call okay. it. But, but two straight games to do what you guys did. I mean, how do you put it into words? Uh, he's a good classmate. You know, we, we came in in 03 and we're, you know, still going strong 10 years later. And, uh, yeah, it couldn't happen to a better guy. You've been around here a long time. What did Lovey Smith say at halftime? He basically cursed us. I'd probably say he put a someone a little spark under our rear end, and you know we, we start playing, we start getting to the quarterback, we start making plays. You know, uh, we 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 were a little flat in the first half. We came out with a sense of urgency. Peanut, thank you. We appreciate. How was how was this one similar to last week? As far as the interception, interception yeah. it was an easier catch. It was a harder catch, but an easier catch. Last week was. Is he really throwing me the ball? He can't be throwing me the ball. I'm about to drop this ball. I'm double clutching the ball. Don't drop the ball. I caught the ball. Oh, I got it. Okay, score. This week was just normal. I feel like this week's catch was easier than last week. You're uh, now the all-time defensive touchdown maker for Chicago Bears history. So I've heard. Does I've heard. It means that I don't. I wish I wouldn't tell me stats and stuff like that. I, I, tell me that when I'm old and the day I retire about all the stats I break. Uh, it, it's cool. It's an honor. You know, the Bears go back 200 years. 200 years. <laughs> They're so old that the organization and you know from all the great players that who who've come here and you know what they've done and to to be that guy. It it yeah man. It's it's an honor to you know represent this organization with with that. What do you attribute it to? I mean, how, is it film work? Is it, I mean, it feel? Sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time. Uh, on that 10th one, I give that credit to Mike Brown. I know he's not playing with us, but, you know, I, I learned a, a great deal from him, the way he scores and sets up the blocks and he cuts it back. That was the only person I thought about, like, as I was running, I was like, all right, Mike B., he runs it, all right, set up, set up the blocks and cut it back. I mean, he was, yeah, that's who I was thinking about as I was running. It's like, all right, yeah, that's what he would have did. Mm. It worked. Oh, snap. I'm, oh, I scored. Okay, cool. Celebrate with your teammates. <laughs> I'm a little re remedial sometimes. That's how I'm thinking as I'm running. It's, I know, I'm a little slow, sorry. Love you I'm a little excited. Ed. Love you stressed that since you've been here. Why has it worked so well in the past three weeks with five scores for you guys? Say again? Love you stress that, taking the ball away and then scoring with it since he's been here, but it's never worked as well as it has the past three weeks. Why are you guys so good at it now? You've always been good the last three weeks. You know what? Sometimes this is how the ball rolls, man. Um, you get lucky. Uh, you get in certain situations. Um, I think this week, the last two weeks, you know, we've been – We've been fairly lucky and, you know, just being in the right place at the right time, you know. We got some good karma going right now. We want to keep that going. All right, Peanut, always entertaining to listen to. And as we look at some of these uh, defensive numbers against the Jaguars here on Sunday, uh, Hunter, you had an opportunity to be teammates for, with both of these guys, both Peanut and Lance. Uh, Peanut first. I mean, what makes him unique? We know he has an unbelievable skill set. He probably should have made a Pro Bowl prior to last season, which was the first time. But what kind of guy is he in the locker room? What kind of student of the game is he? Peanut's a tremendous football player. Everybody knows all about that. But I, I wrote down something from Lovey's press conference, and, and he was asked a question about if they put an emphasis and how they're so good at scoring on defense. And he subtly responds, there's an emphasis on it. It was interesting that we, we busted out the stat of the 2002 Tampa defense scoring the most <laughs> defensive touchdowns. I think that was only a year or two after Lovey had left there. So it was still sort of his lineage and his players in that system, that mindset. It's not a surprise. Every time a defensive player gets his hands on the football, they're thinking one thing, 
how do I score? It's not a surprise you see it happen with Lance. It's not a surprise you see it happen with Major. It's not a surprise you see it happen with Peanut. Everybody that gets the ball is thinking touchdown. That's why they're so opportunistic. That's why they continue to put points on the board in key situations. This is the first time, apparently, from what we understand in NFL history, that a couple of teammates have scored touchdowns, defensive touchdowns, in back-to-back -back weeks. The same two teammates have been able to do that, and that says a whole lot. And, uh, you know, I want to ask uh, Jim as well. You were a teammate of Mike Brown's back yeah. in the day. And uh, Jiggs, you had your share of uh, pretty impressive defensive backs that you were around. Everyone seems to complain through the years, why don't the Bears have great cornerbacks? Their cornerbacks aren't good enough. Or yeah. uh, more so that position than safeties. But, you know, Hunter's been around guys who really have a nose for the ball, and I know you did, too, with Mike Brown. Yeah, they're, they're hungry to score. They're hungry to make plays. They, you know, they thrive for those type of situations. And I think, you know, it's, it's by no mistake, you know, Peanut Tillman always finds himself in the right place at the right time. Great players do that. You know, Mike Brown did it. You can mm -hmm. probably name play. Gary Fensick, Gary Fensick, I think, mm -hmm. still has the interception record for the Bears with yeah. something like 38 or something Yeah, like overall that. interception. Uh -huh. well, yeah. Let's just leave it at that. It doesn't happen by happenstance. No. <laughs> you know, there's Study a the reason game. for it. That's All right. right. Yeah. Let's head back to Jacksonville. Our Kip Lewis is standing by a couple of guests, Chris Conte and Corey Wooten. Take it away, guys. All right, thanks, guys, uh, with Chris Conti. And first of all, I talked to you a little bit in the locker room, but you guys definitely came out with a little bit of different game plan, playing a much more man, man-free coverage in this game. Yeah, I think against these guys, we knew we wanted to sack the box, put eight guys in the box, and uh, really shut down the run because we knew um, the quarterback has struggled. He's a young guy. And uh, if we could force him to pass, that would help us out a lot. So shutting down the run, I think, was our, our biggest priority. And I think we did a pretty good job of that. Was it fun for you? Because sometimes when you play that cover, too, you're 20 yards deep. Yeah. You're not involved. This game, you got to be a little bit more involved. Yeah. I, I get to play in the box a little bit more. I still play a lot of single high. Um, but being in the box is a lot of fun. Get to get underneath stuff and then be involved in the run game. So it it's it mixes things up and makes things a little more interesting for me. I'm not just, you know, shuffling, getting back, getting depth at uh, 20 yards. So you get to be involved a little bit more and make a few more plays. How do you explain the pick sixes right now? They're great. They're fun to watch. I just want to get involved and get <laughs> in on one. So uh, hopefully I can get one pretty soon. But it's fun, you know, get a, get a lot of energy going. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, Chris, appreciate your time. Stephen Pye over here messing with these guys. Uh, we also got Corey Wooten here. Of course, uh, you you kind of got in the act. It seems like on the defensive line, you guys have been taking turns. Two sacks for you in this game. That's got to feel nice to con come out and contribute that way. You know, it's definitely good, especially after last week. Uh, you know, didn't feel like I performed to the, to the ability I was capable of. You know, coach is definitely on me, uh, one of the strong performers in me. I know I had to come out here and make some plays for the defense. You guys held Maurice Jones Drew to 56 yards rushing. Obviously, that was the number one key. When you came into this game, you said, hey, this is a team that couldn't pass. Uh, you guys, we got to be pleased with what you did overall defensively. You know, I think I think we were definitely uh, pretty pleased with what we did. Um, you know, stopping the run was a big thing, especially with a back like him. He had a good uh, physical front, and, uh, you know, we knew we had to stop the run to be able to get him to pass, and we were able to make big plays across the board. What did you guys do against their, their passing game? Obviously, they've struggled a little bit in the passing game, but what did you guys do to keep them from throwing the ball? You know, I think, uh, you know, the, the back half and the linebackers did a great job of covering all day. And then, you know, we were able to get pressure up front. It goes hand in hand, you know, um, when those guys can cover and we can get pressure, that's exactly what the Tampa 2 defense is. And, you know, I think that was in display tonight. For you, I mean, five games, you guys are in first place, four and one. But how nice is it for you to sort of be, you know, playing the way you are and getting as much time you've been able, you've been getting so far? You know, it definitely feels good. Uh, you know, the first two years, you know, weren't, weren't where I imagined it. Um, you know, but I was working, you know, all this offseason, all this camp, um, just just trying to get healthy. And, you know, I'm finally healthy now and uh, I'm able to contribute. And, uh, you know, Coach has done a good job. You know, Coach uh, Marinelli and Coach Fair coaching us up and just getting the best out of us every week. Final thing, it was awfully hot out there today. You guys just kind of cooled off a little bit in Chicago. Did you guys start to feel that heat there in the second half? Oh, it was, it was definitely hot uh, out there, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, on the sideline, it was definitely cool on the benches and, uh, you know, the training staff and, the um, you know, our weight room staff did a good job of getting us hydrated with the, you know, Gatorade and everything. So, you know, I think it was good across the board. All right, Corey, appreciate your time. Thank Corey Wooten, guys, uh, outside the Bears locker room, let's go back to you. Uh, we have to have Kip give uh, Brett Fisher, our shortest cameraman, a heads up when he oh. bring those guys, uh, six, 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 seven, out there to talk to them. Uh, and we saw a little bit of like Chris Conti maybe uh, 
high school class uniform. <laughs> Jim called the new kids and on and the block. And then Miami, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, like that Councilman Crockett and Tubbs Councilman going on there with uh, Corey hey, Wooten, I, I, but they gotta, were all looking good. Got to say Let's something see. about Corey Wooten, though. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a guy that when he came out of Northwestern, there was talk of him being a number First one round, pick. Yeah. Uh, and then he got injured, of right. course, and then slipped down to the fourth round. But this guy, you watched him come along this year, uh, game after game. He's starting to play really well. And what a compliment. You have he and Peppers out there, and then, you know, McClellan out there as well. Young guys helping out the old man at the defensive yeah. end. Stats guy, help us, uh, help us out on this one. I think right now, Toane. He's the only defensive lineman without a sack for the Bears. They've all and registered. Was active today, I think they yeah, yeah it was eight guys uh -huh. today because so of the heat. Every one of them, that just tells again about the depth. Every one of them have registered sacks right now for the Bears. You saw that board a moment ago comparing the numbers between Matt Forte and uh, Maurice Jones Drew, the defending uh, league rushing champ, and here it is again, both represented by the same agent as well. We might add, but uh, uh, Hunter, you said uh, you played in that 08 game against MJ. Couldn't quite remember. They're all a blur at this point, I know. But eh, a challenge, a very unique type of running back that the Bears are able to bottle up. Low to the ground, powerful, and that's been his bread and butter, and he's the best in the league at it, too. He can be a hard guy to find at times, too. He just kind of bounces around a little bit, gets behind those linemen. Sometimes you get lost. I, I thought that Bears did a tremendous job playing gap control defense. He had one or two runs, one early where he kind of bounced outside. I think we were in cover two. Forced him almost out of bounds to the sideline, but managed to sneak in there for 10 or 15 extra yards and, and then the one in the second half was actually a trap play where the linebackers were peppered up there in the a gaps and that's just a tough play to stop a little bit of a scheme issue there we were thinking pass they ran the ball other than that i, I don't know what he had total but the rest of the game he was pretty much bottled up well, i love when you talk technical from the defensive side it's beautiful man it's, beautiful. Uh, let's hear from the guy who had the better <laughs> statistical day matt forte 22 carries 107 yards kip caught up with him in the locker room all right, thanks, guys. With Matt Forte, who, first of all, I know you're kind of trying to show off this new suit. You're proud of these new suits this year. I ain't trying to show off, you know. <laughs> it's just a little something, something, you know, that I put together. So You put together or someone else put together for you? Uh, I put it, I mean, I got to okay it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it involves both of us, so I, I give okay. them credit, too, as well. 22 carries, 107 yards. Uh, you happy number one with just the number of carries you finally got to get in, get in this game? Yeah, when you get 20 plus carries, you know, you get in a rhythm, uh, especially with the offensive line. They get to come off the ball and uh, not have to pass protect so much. And, you know, everybody just, you know, rushing the passer. So uh, they did a great job up front opening the holes. And, you know, we did a good job running the ball and doing play action. How do you explain sort of the slow starts we've seen from you guys and really all season almost? Uh, we just kind of. In the first half, we shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, we were moving the ball up and down the field, and then we get close and get a penalty, which will back us up, and then sometimes maybe take us out of field goal range. And then when you do that, you can't get points, so you have to punt the ball. So um, second half, we came out and executed, especially like, you know, on deep balls. You know, as a, as a matter, I mean, that's make or break. You know, if you catch the ball like a 50-yard game, you don't. You know, you get back there, back on the 10-yard line. So defense is kind of making you look guys look bad on offense. You guys have five <laughs> offensive touchdowns the last two games. They have four touchdowns I mean how do you explain that yeah I don't I, we got to change we got to change that around I mean uh, Charles and Lance got more touchdowns than I do so I mean you know it's, it's kind of I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that but uh, you know hopefully after this bye week you know we turn that around and then you know they can count on us to score the touchdowns I wasn't gonna bring that up by the way but finally going into the bye week is this a good time to go into a bye and get a little time off yeah, it is. You know, we got some guys that's banged up and, uh, you know, me to rest my ankle and stuff. So uh, it'll be pretty good. All right, there it is. Matt Forte with his new look suit for 2012. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go back to you. All right, gentlemen, and uh, yeah, I think if it was a Bears loss, Kip probably wouldn't even ask the question about uh, Let's Peanut that. and Lance uh, outscoring uh, Matt Forte. But they got the running game going. Jigs, uh, I mentioned uh, last week leading up to the game, do you play him or not? Do you get the ankle fully healthy with the bye week coming up? You're playing Jacksonville as well, which has struggled against the run. And I said, They made the right call. I and you did too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I think from a mental standpoint, he wanted to get back in the flow before they hit the bye week. And we were talking uh, before we came on about why he was in there so late. 
And I looked at Jim and I said, well, because he wants 100 yards. That's why. I want him healthy. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about the 100. Well, but, you know, credit the offensive line, too. Because, uh, you know, goodness knows everybody's been on them pretty much all yeah. season long. Uh, but in this game, not only did they come through with the run game, and again, they stayed after it. He was averaging 6.2 yards per carry in the first half in this game. He finished up at 4.9 per carry. That is what led to a lot of those long drives, those time-consuming drives. We talked about flipping the field on, on the opposition. That's what they did a couple of times with long drives, starting from the 6 on one and the 11 on the on another, and took it all the way down the other end for field goals. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just want to add one thing because, I mean, I just don't get where everybody says the Bears played so bad uh, till the half. I mean, yes, they did pick it up in the second half. When do you go in, dominate your opponent, and you go in the halftime with the lead, and everybody says you're terrible? I mean, they're not. Well, they did exactly. Jimmy, I'll go back to the Bulls during the championship runs. Yeah. They'd win by 20 points, and everybody would just be going, well, I don't think they can do it again. <laughs> and, 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 the, and, the bar, and the bar was set high on opening yeah, day yeah. when they put up uh, more than 40 points as well. Much more to come here on Bears Post Game Live. We'll head back to Nicole, and here are some of your tweets. Also here from Brian Earl Lacker and John Moon Mullen. We're going to get our view from the moon coming up as well after he hit the locker room. Time now for our poll question. Another glance at that, our discount tire poll question. Again, how many wins will the Bears finish with? They got four heading into the bye week. Four and one so far. Will it be A, eight or less? B, nine to ten? C, 11 or 12? Or D, 13 or more again? Go to CSNChicago.com. We'll have the results later on Bears Post Game Live. Find big savings during the Menards Oktoberfest sale. Update with new major kitchen appliances, all 10% off Menards' everyday low prices. Add style and function with frigid air. This tall tub dishwasher has three automatic wash cycles and an energy-saving dry option. In black or white, $269. This 18.2 cubic foot top freezer refrigerator has humidity-controlled crisper drawers and gallon door storage, $449. Save big money at Menards. I'm feeling lousy, and I don't think I can make it through another winter. <laughs> Your old furnace is costing you money. <clears throat> Save 20 to 40% during Four Seasons' biggest sale of the season. New furnaces from just $17.95 installed. Furnace and AC combos from just $36.95. Plus, enjoy five years interest-free financing. For all the right reasons, call 866-4-SEASONS. This is my business. I'm the owner and sole proprietor. I only have one other employee, Chester. <laughs> it's a romantic notion. Be the boss, but uh, you are alone. Well, not technically alone. I do have a lot of help, actually. My UPS store. I had this printed there. Packing, shipping, help. Outstanding. Posters. I have a mailbox there. Best thing, they're right down the street. The owner's a friend. You got the account. <laughs> my team. Yes! Careful now. 25, 45, on 17. That's right, right? Set, hut. At Yokohama, pioneering technology to produce the best performing tires in the world. It's all part of our game plan. Buy a set of Yokohama tires now through October 31st at any participating discount tire store and get a Chicago Bears Charles Tillman jersey for free. Visit YokohamaTire.com for details. No matter how hard you try, pictures just don't do it justice. The Doritos Locos Tacos. Taking tacos where no one thought they'd go. Bears Injury Report is brought to you by ATI Physical Therapy. Taking physical therapy to a higher level. Ask your doctor about ATI Physical Therapy. Bears Huddle, presented by Jimmy John's. Wednesdays at 4.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back. Time now for our Four Seasons Heat and Air Conditioning. Who's hot and who's not? Uh, from this week's games, this afternoon's games, Andrew Luck. As the Indianapolis Colts knock off yeah, baby. the Green Bay Packers, and it, you saw his numbers, and his main target was the guy on the right side there, Reggie Wayne, who ended up catching the game-winning touchdown pass. Ahmad Bradshaw helped 
Uh, the Giants, the G-Men, a rally from a 14-0 deficit at one point against Cleveland. On our not list here, Matt Castle, well, they decided just to run and run and run against Baltimore, and then, for good measure, he got knocked out with a head injury in the fourth quarter as Baltimore just got past Kansas City. Ben Jarvis Green, Ellis held fairly much in check in that ball game, and Chris Johnson continuing to put up just horrific numbers. Hopefully it's that way when uh, Tennessee comes to play the Bears, and uh, that'll happen a little bit later on as Tennessee lost to Minnesota, which keep pace with the Bears. Time now to bring in our view from the moon, CSNChicago.com beat writer John Moon Mullen joining us from Everbank Field. And, John, I'm sure a lot of good little tidbits coming out of the locker room today from a 3-3 halftime game to a 41-3 final. What kind of things stood out most to you in talking to the players? Well, you know, it was interesting how, how they dealt with uh, Maurice Jones-Drew. Uh, Rod Marinelli showed the team or showed the defensive guys a, uh, a film specifically of Maurice Jones Drew and the fullback running over safeties, specifically safeties. The message was learn how to tackle this guy and you defensive lineman don't let it come to this. And they said it was it was really an eye-opening kind of thing. Uh, you know, the defensive lineman said we really want to make sure that he does not get going. Major Wright also told me, he said, you know, this was an interesting thing because he said Maurice Jones Drew likes you to try to kill him. He said, what we tried to do, rather than just blow this guy up, make a good tackle, get him, get him down. That's all you want to do. It's so tempting because he's not that tall to try to blow him up. It just doesn't work, and that, that came out, and I thought they really certainly played well against him. Yeah, I can hear him now. I have a particular skill set that's running over you. Hey, you know what, Moon, I wanted to ask you about the crowd that was there uh, because we talked about it uh, last week, about you know how many people were coming down from Chicago. The players talked about how much of a difference it made, and you could hear them during the course of the game making more no noise than the Jacksonville fans. You know, it was, Danny. In fact, when I got to the, the hotel, uh, there must have been two, three hundred people in the lobby, and I happened to be walking through it exactly the same time Lovey Smith and Marianne were coming in, and I'm telling you, the pre you might have thought the, the president or, or the, the Republican nominee, depending on your party, was walking through. Uh, this was starting even Saturday. I mean, it, just a, a real energy all around this team, and the players were signing things. It was, a, it was a good dynamic, and it carried over into this game, and you could really sense some things that players said. They, they could feel it on the field especially when things turned around in that third quarter, that there was such an emotional high for this team uh, that the Jaguars eventually just kind of, they didn't quit. They just kind of lost heart. Moon, Jim Miller here. And my question is about, you know, because everybody's talking about, hey, the Bears just didn't play a good first half. I'm not buying it from what I saw. Granted, they could have, you know, got a couple more first downs and third down conversions, but I think the defense was dominating. They shut down Maurice Jones-Drew that you've just been talking about. And then, isn't that the sign of a good team that when they do turn it on, they absolutely dominated uh, this football game? It won't go to this team's head, but I just don't know where everybody's saying that they just didn't play a good first half of 30-minute football against the Jaguars. Yeah, Jimmy, it's a great point. And, and talking with two of the offensive linemen in particular, I said, you know, the cliche is what did you change at halftime? And they said, you know, we didn't. We Lovey was mad. He was all over them at halftime, just about execution. And, you know, this very well could have been a 17-3 to game. Uh, as the players said, Jacksonville didn't stop us. You know, we had the interception, then we had penalties, and there was an, a you know, penalty on uh, you know, Gabe Karimi, oh, even into the second half, some of that. But they, they were frustrated and really feeling like they couldn't be stopped. So while the score wasn't what you wanted it to be, you, you raise a good point, Jimmy, and that's exactly how they felt. They didn't change anything, which sometimes you say, well, let's start running right more, let's start doing this more, whatever. None of that happened because they really did feel like they should have been dominating this game, and what they were doing was working. All right, Moon, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes, coming out of the locker room to jump on with us. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it, as always, and we'll continue reading you on csnchicago.com. That's John Moon Mullen, our Bears insider. And... Uh, Speaking of defense and how the Bears were trying to bottle up Maurice Jones-Drew, as Moon was talking about at the beginning of uh, that visit with us, let's hear from the Bears' uh, captain and middle linebacker, Brian Urlacher. We'll talk about that uh, <clears throat> interception by Lance. Uh, I didn't even see it. Well, you helped make the play. He made the play. He caught it and scored. I just saw him running. Outran number 80. That's all I saw was him hauling back to the end zone again. It's unreal. i never seen anything like it. Two straight weeks, the same two guys, pick sixes. It's awesome. Jealous? Not one bit. I'm the happiest guy in this locker room. I, it's, <laughs> it's fun to be a part of it and fun to watch it. I, like I said, I've never seen that like it before on any, any team. You know, so it's just fun to be a part of it and, and get a chance to watch these guys do it. Right. Did the bye come at a good time today? Bye Sorry. come at a good time for you, Forum? Bye always comes at a good time. <laughs>
I, mean, I don't care if it's week two, week ten. They're always it's always good to have a buy. You know, I used to hate it when I was young because I didn't want to take any time off, but now I enjoy them. What was the key to the defense today? Uh, we wanted to stop the run, number one. We all, that's our number one goal. I think we did that except for that long run there in the third quarter or fourth quarter. Um, and then rush them and get takeaways. And that's, that's our whole thing all season long. Is we've had some leads, which has been nice. You know, we've had a chance to, to build on those and kind of get some pass rushing going. Brian, can you talk about how everybody in that front four week to week is – everybody's contributed. Yeah, I think Wooten had a good day today. He had that sack, sack fumble there in the first half that was big. Um, I, I, say, I said all year long, there's eight guys rotating in there, and they're all playing well. Uh, you just pick a guy each week, and they show up. And Brian Urlacher will now get the benefit of a bye week and uh, that whole defense as well, though, Hunter, they probably don't want to have a bye week right now. The way they're rolling and the way they're putting points on the board, uh, are you seeing continued improvement with Brian in what he's doing physically? And, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the job's a whole lot easier, too. Less pressure on him with the way everyone else is stepping up. Brian's getting healthy. He's, he's not healthy yet. So I, I think this is, we knew this was going to be a work in progress with Brian. He's doing the most important thing for him right now, which is getting everybody lined up, communicating the calls, making the right checks. This bye week is going to be huge for him. He'll get a chance to rest. Hopefully he'll be able to practice a little bit more next week. He's a guy that likes to be out there, even in training camp hates missing practice. So to expect him to get out there, perform at this, the level that we're used to seeing him at in the first quarter of the season, I'm just glad he's still healthy. I'm glad he's still out there, still competing. I think you're going to see a different Brian Urlacher after the bye week. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see some interesting theories going on heading into this game about how missing training camp maybe helped Maurice Jones-Drew, that his body was a little bit fresher and maybe hurt Brian Urlacher because he likes being out there so much. But uh, it appears as though Brian's on his way back. And for the second time facing the Bears, Maurice Jones-Drew held in the 50s yeah. in yardage uh, because uh, this Bears defense has found a way to bottle him Brian up. Brian missed training camp and found himself in a swimming pool. Maurice right. Jones-Drew missed training camp and found himself in a weight room. <laughs> there, there's a big difference there in terms of what's going to get you ready for the season. Saving yourself some of the abuse that you would get during training camp in terms of the pounding as a running back, that's a little bit different than not being able to run, not being able to work out. I really think Brian is still getting his legs under him. And Brian talked about uh, how being in that swimming pool, a uh, swimming pool, was killing him too because of the workout that that was giving him. That uh, you know he was able to build up some endurance through that while he continued recuperating that knee. Let's head over to our Illinois Back Institute interactive suite. Nicole Darren checking in with us once again to tell us what's going on in Twitterville and what the people are saying after this 41-3 victory over Jacksonville. Nicole. Hey guys, well you can voice your opinion at csnchicago.com or on Twitter using that hashtag Bears Talk. A lot of excited Bears fans tonight. I read a lot of happy comments earlier. Now it's time to read some of the concerns that fans are having right now. Take a look at some of these tweets. Caitlin Bujack says they need to play a complete game. They won't be able to score 38 points in the second half against the good teams. So M. Farr says D should not have to jump start. The O offense needs to come out aggressive. And the last one here, Randy Weedu says well, he has a great question. He says, great game. Only concern is what happened to Alshon Jeffrey. We need him. Now, guys, I used to cover Jeffrey when he was at South Carolina. An excellent young athlete, important part of this Bears team. What do you guys think? Yeah, he went out with uh, what appeared to be a head injury. Lovey went out able to uh, provide very much uh, detail about this. This is another situation where the bye week is going to help him. Jim, what you've seen from Alshon Jeffrey, strides week by week. He came in absolutely. leading the uh, all of NFL rookies in yeah. uh, reception yardage. Yeah, absolutely. He's doing a great job out there and hopefully it's not a significant injury maybe it's something he can tape up but uh, you know we'll get the obviously the 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 skinny on on that injury but as for him learning uh, coverages as for him setting up uh, the defensive backs like today on that slant route uh, for the touchdown I think he's doing a fantastic job you can definitely see the size I mean defensive backs are just not a match for Alshon Jeffrey you know it looked like when he when he was going against the defender in, into the end zone he got his hand caught up in the, in the guys under mm -hmm. his shoulder pads mm -hmm. and it, twisted his wrist back and then he went down to the ground but the great thing about it was while doing all of that he caught the ball and held on to it for the touchdown I don't want to be a doomsdayer but usually when you see that brown wrap that they had on there break. Th there's usually a splint underneath mm -hmm. so that's probably some sort of broken bone now it's just a matter of figuring out does it require mm -hmm. surgery and yeah. can he play with it can he catch with it Right. don't yeah. want to speculate we'll see right. if it's a sprain or something like that and ironically Earl Brennan himself coming off a hand injury not believed to be very serious but he did miss his second consecutive game. Time now, speaking of which, for our ATI physical therapy injury report.
Court coming out of this 41-3 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Earl Bennett did, in fact, miss this game, as well as Evan Rodriguez. We'll see if those two guys can come back for the game against the Detroit Lions a week from tomorrow. Actually, it's going to be two weeks from tomorrow. I don't know. My math's all screwed up. But Alshon Jeffrey left the game with a hand injury as well. And there's your ATI physical therapy injury report. And we'll be back with more Bears Post Game Live when we continue here on Comcast Sportsnet. At Walgreens, we know kids share all kinds of things, especially germs. That's why you always get your flu shot. This year, Walgreens will do you one better and check if there are any other immunizations you might need. Absolutely free, no appointment necessary. Preparing you for years of unplanned sharing to come. At Walgreens and Take Care Clinics, we've got all kinds of ways to arm yourself for flu season. And they're all right here at the corner of happy and healthy. What do you see? Is it a tree? Or is it a shelter? Is it a time capsule telling the story of the last century? Or a way to combat climate change in this one? Looking at things from every angle. It happens every day at DePaul University by bringing together students with diverse perspectives and professors who challenge conventional thinking. A wider point of view emerges. DePaul University, a greater perspective. In 1979, I was playing against one of the best players in the league, and I tried to throw him. I had wrenched the vertebrae in my back. When I first met Dr. Jeff, we saw eye to eye about what I needed. He has innovative ways of taking the weight load off and allowing you to work the muscles without the full body weight. Today, I don't even concern myself with what I can and cannot do. Call the Illinois Back Institute today at 877-588-6129 or go to IllinoisBackPain.com. Fight fires, you know, you become a threat. This family, everybody comes home. Chicago Fire premieres Wednesday on NBC5 Chicago. Welcome back to Bears Post Game Live, presented by Illinois Back Institute. Bears defense able to come up big and put points on the board as well. 41-3, to the final in Jacksonville to run their record of 4-1. And, and part of that defensive unit that held Jacksonville to 189 total yards and Maurice Jones-Drew to just 56 yards. He had a couple tackles on the day. Israel Adonijay visiting with our Kip Lewis. All right, thanks, guys, with Israel Adonage. And once again, I mean, how do you explain the defense putting up the number of points you guys are putting up? I mean, ultimately, it's the system we play. You know, force the quarterback to, to get rid of the ball, to have a bad day. And, and then the guys in the back seven, they just have such great ball skills and, and the ability just to be a threat as soon as they, they get the ball in their hands. You guys did some different things, especially in the secondary. It was pretty obviously you guys came into this game wanting to stop the run. Was that the number one focus? I mean, number one, no, no question, is stop the run and, and force that offense to be one-dimensional. And, and then from there, you know, try to get to the quarterback and make them make mistakes. I mean, the ball was coming out quick. And when that happens, typically, you know, if they're forcing it, there's going to be picks, and uh, we're fortunate Peanut and Lance were able to take two to the house. Are those guys going to get a little too full of themselves with these pick sixes? No, no, no. I mean, we're having a lot of fun out there, but ultimately, you know, those guys are, are veteran guys. They understand that, you know, the game is about one play, one snap at a time. You know, we're going to celebrate it. They put it behind us, and then uh, when we get by, back from the bye, we'll be back at it. Finally, how big is it, you mentioned the bye, to go into the bye first place, four and one? I mean, that's where we want to be. You know, ultimately, we're right where we want to be. It's, it's we're not going to look too much into it. We're 
we're right where we want to be and we have an opportunity now to get healthy. Everybody that's a little bumped and, and, and banged up, it's an opportunity to kind of heal up so we can position for a nice little run when we get back. Izzy, thanks. Appreciate your time. All right, guys, Israel Danje inside the Bears locker room. Let's go back to you. Kip, Israel, thank you very much. And time for another break. But before we do, take it. Another look at our discount tire poll question. How many wins will the Bears finish with? A, 8 or less, B, 9 or 10, C, 11 or 12, or D, 13 or more. Again, go to csnchicago.com, register your vote. We will have the answer coming up as Bears Post Game Live continues. And after this break, we'll have our monsters as we go around the horn with our MVPs as well as our comment of the week. Bears fans, Yokohama and Discount Tire want you in the game with this great tire deal. Here's your play. Now through October 31st, go to your participating Discount Tire store, get a set of four Yokohama tires, and score an official Bears replica jersey worth $100. Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. Now three on this rare collection of baseball cards. I'm at 33. You want to put another bit about there? Once again, I'll go in the charity. Now four. Now five. Now six. Now seven. I'm at 37. Now you're gonna kick yourself. You don't go home with this box of baseball history. Now wait. Now all in, all done. Sold it. Sold it. 3,800 right there to that lucky gentleman. Transfer funds from anywhere with mobile banking. Get started today at BMO Harris Bank. This reminds me of a scene in that movie. Oh, man, what's it called? Uh, I don't know. No, you know, it's the rookie cop, the veteran cop duo. It's like us, partner. Just because you get way more movies with Xfinity On Demand doesn't mean you always have to rub it in. Oh, duck! <laughs> Sorry. Ditch satellite for the most on demand. Experience Xfinity. Goodbye, frustration. Hello, admiration. The hot new 4G LTE Samsung Galaxy S3. Now available at U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular. Hello. Hello, better. The Galaxy S3 is just $199.99. No rebate required. And you'll get another Galaxy phone free with your purchase. At the store on Cicero, 31st Street or Cermak. When we got married... I had three kids, and she became the full-time mother of three. It was soccer and ballet and cheerleading and baseball. Those years were crazy. So as we go into this next phase, you know, a big part of it for us is that there isn't anything on the schedule. Welcome back to Bears Post Game Live. Time for our Monsters of the Midway, otherwise known as the Bears MVP. And Mr. Hunter Hillenmeyer will start us off. Since I know we're going to have some offensive guys talking about how great the offense <laughs> looked, if the, if the Bears defense were the only ones that got on the plane this week, they would have won 14 to 3. If you score a defensive touchdown, you get a game ball. Peanut, Lance, congratulations, Monsters of the Midway. Honor honorable mention to Corey Wooten. I thought his sack fumble at the end of the first half took points off the board, had another half sack too. And Jim was going to say exactly the same thing, well, right? Well, the, no. these defensive guys don't get it. I mean, the Bears could have came home at <laughs> halftime. It was 6-3. to three. The offense would have won the game. A win. win right? But there's going to be a lot of accolades thrown around. For me, could give it to Jay Cutler, could give it to the O-line. I'm going Brandon Marshall. I mentioned the opening monologue, Derek Cox. He is an outstanding defensive back. He worked him all day long for 12 receptions and 144 yards and a, and a touchdown. Well, you know, I'm going to agree with you, Jimmy, on that. I got Jay and Brandon Marshall, <laughs> Matt Forte. <laughs> Honorable mention to the offensive line for helping out in that run game and helping Matt out get over 100 yards. And on the defensive side, Hunter, I've got Peanut Tillman and Lance Briggs. And, and by the way, uh, you know what? I, I still like the way when you when you talk about all the turnovers and whatnot and why it happens. Again, it was because of defensive line pressure. When you look at that second half, that's why that ball started coming out there and going to the wrong team because those guys, four guys up front, were getting after the quarterback. So Jigs giving a little love to the well, detail. hold on, Jigs forgot one. The Bears fans that well, the fans to the that game. travel. Down, 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 exactly right. Bought eight tickets. He's got to make sure he gets his game ball. All right, and even 
even though the Bears defense has scored five touchdowns even since Hunter has joined us, uh, I'm going to give it to Matt Forte. I was wondering whether it was wise to play him this week. Bad on me as he gets a 100-yard game. 22 carries, 107 yards, and this Jacksonville Jaguars defense that had been giving up an average of 150 rushing yards per game. Bears pile up 214 on the ground, and they're able to keep pounding. I hope Jiggs is happy with that. And now time for our comment of the week as we head back to our Illinois Back Institute Interactive Suite. Nicole Darren has that. Hey guys, we've been taking your questions and comments on the entire show on CSNChicago.com and on Twitter with the hashtag Bears Talk. Now time to announce our comment of the week. Proud new owner of a Paris Club gift card for $50. Take a look. Here it is. Your comment of the week. It comes to us via Twitter. MookieBears34 says we are seeing defense like never before, which is saying something in this town. I think it's simple but poignant. Congratulations. You're the proud owner of a $50 gift card to the Paris Club. Coming up, poll results are PGL remix and a look ahead as the Bears head into their bye week. Bears Post Game Live is coming right back. This is perfect. Packers are going to be tough this year. Hope so. Aww. Yeah! I mean, aw, yeah. That's six sacks on the season. Actually, it's seven. Even better, baby. With NFL Mobile from Verizon, no one will know the game better than you. Hey, Matthew! Well, almost no one. Watch live NFL games Thursday, Sunday, and Monday nights on NFL Mobile and experience football on Verizon 4G LTE. Introducing a reason to look twice. Introducing a stunning work of technology. The entirely new Lexus ES and the first ever ES Hybrid. See your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer. I'm in the Honors Program here at NIU. The Honors House is a place where Honors students can live together. I lived in the Honors House as a freshman, so I got to meet people right off the bat. I was with students who were in the same kinds of classes as me. So living in the Honors House just meant I had that group to start off with. Living with other Honors students made all the difference in my experience, so why go anywhere else? Northern Illinois University. Learning today. Leading tomorrow. When is the best time for mouth-watering wings? Game time. Family time. Party time. Any time. Enjoy Wingstop's regular or boneless wings in 10 mouth-watering flavors. Cook to order with a variety of fresh homemade sides to choose from. Wingstop, the wing experts. 25, 45, That's right, right? Set, hunt. At Yokohama, pioneering technology to produce the best performing tires in the world. It's all part of our game plan. Buy a set of Yokohama tires now through October 31st at any participating discount tire store and get a Chicago Bears Charles Tillman jersey for free. Visit YokohamaTire.com for details. Welcome back into Bears Post Game Live. Here are the results of our discount tire poll question of the day. How many wins will the Bears finish with? And 60% of you are saying 11 to 12, which really disappoints Jigs, but 13 or oh, more faith. vote to 22% coming in second. Time now for our Week 5 PGL Remix. He's a great player. He's been that way uh, for a long time. Uh, the ball the great. Kool -Aid taste. Yeah, yeah, we have to like it. It. Yeah, yeah, we go. 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 out there. I think this week, the last two weeks, you know, we've been we've been fairly lucky and you know, just being in the right place at the right time. You know. We got some good karma going right now. They're fun to watch. I just want to get involved and get in on one. So we gotta change we gotta change that around. I mean, uh, Charles and Lance got more touchdowns than I do. So I mean, you know, it's it's kinda I'm, I'm kinda jealous of that. They don't crown a win after the first half. Simple as that. You have to play that second half. We play hard. We try to force the issue and, you know, um, 
you know, when you, when you play the game the right way, good things happen to you. Are you jealous? Not one bit. I'm the happiest guy in this locker room. I, it's, <laughs> it's fun to be a part of it and fun to watch it. I, I guess I've never seen that like it before on any, any team. You know, so it's just fun to be a part of it and, and get a chance to watch these guys do it. I've lived here almost all my life, and I'm still not used to it. Um, no, I mean, you know, I guess I got, I got beer blood in me now. That's why we brought, brought him here. I mean, to, to be that guy, to be that number one receiver, whenever he uh, gets one-on-one, -on -one, we, we expect him to win 100% of the time, uh, hands down. Here's our BMO Harris window to next week. Next week is a bye, and as we get final thoughts from each of the guys, Hunter, a lot of dates are circled on the calendar for players. Is the bye week circled on the calendar? These guys will be excited about that. One thing to look for in the bye week here, offense has been great, defense has been great. Hester had the circus catch today, but I'd really love to see them get more out of our special teams as we move into the, the, the gut of the season here, even at the expense of his production on offense. Real quick thought, Jim. I'll tell you what, enjoy it. Don't do anything stupid to get in trouble during the bye week to destroy any sweat, sweat equity you've put in to earn a 4-1 uh, record right now. And we're out of time. We're going to get Jiggs' thoughts because we have him three times during the week tomorrow. Hope to see you two weeks from tomorrow after the Lions game.